why now? Why now? Why, why have we waited since the 30th of March, 2021? And not only that, like the first batch of when all the coaches were banned, if, if all the information is still, if, if the answer is the bullshit spiel that we got last time he was on about resources, then you shouldn't be the arbiter of Counter-Strike and who's getting banned and not getting banned. Add some fun to your space with Extrify, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4, their fourth generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify, no regrets, Guaranteed. Bomb has been planted. Huh? Hey, buddy, let me show you how to fix that. Bitskins.com. Buy and sell skins instantly. Deposit and withdraw funds instantly with crypto or directly to your Visa card. <laughs> Bitskins.com, the best skin marketplace. Season 6, episode 15, the PGO Antwerp kickoff extraordinaire. Quickly, big shout out to our sponsors, ExtraFi. Check them out if you're in the market for some peripherals, bit skins, buy and sell CSGO skins and items, and M1 bet gamble responsibly. Uh, that's the sponsors out of the way. That's the intro pretty much done and dusted here. And uh, there's no funny bits just yet, but uh, I think a lot of you will be happy to know that Lucas is back. Lucas, say hello to everybody. There you go. Hey, there, I don't have all my, my shortcuts ready, but hello. I you got your biggest firework. fan behind you. Oh, oh, it did. It, oh, it, it said okay. point, but it didn't hit anything. <laughs> Dude, he's done here. He's gotten excited. He's brought himself some props, prop comedy, some of my absolute favorites. So I'm going to give you a big thumbs up for that, Lucas. Thank but you. we've got you back in the hot seat. Probably what he's doing. Buttons. It's probably what he's doing when you ask for like a clip or something. That's what he's doing. That's what he's the next carrot take. top. He's just, uh, he's just refining his act. Yeah, it, it, look, uh, it, it's taken years for Carrot Top to get to where he is. So I'm, I'm sure that over time, Lucas will be able to do the same, get himself up there with some some gags. Uh, okay, look, a couple of people have spoken here. The one who hasn't is Striker. Striker's joining us. We've got Prof and we have Jason Moses O'Toole as the special guest this evening. But it's going to be a bit more talkative tonight. It's going to be a bit more of a discussion, gentlemen. Uh, now, uh, Striker, what is your favorite topic that we're going to be discussing today, mate? I, I want you to pick just one, your favorite topic. Does it, like, does it have to be specific or like one of these? Um, the, I was the hoping. Ones? I was kind of hoping you'd be like, oh, we have to talk about ESIC banning coaches again. That's, that's definitely the, not my favorite one. Let's just yeah. Say that. that's, the, that's definitely the least favorite on the list today. And that, but that's going to be the most fun, I think, that we're going to have today here. We do have a lot to, to sink our teeth into. We have a, a lot of topics. Uh, I didn't say the stuff with the anchor.fm. You guys listen to the intros enough. It doesn't need to always be there. So we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it this week round. Uh, Prof, we were on a call early this morning. Um, are, you, are you happy with where things are going? Yeah, it's uh, it's progressing in a good direction. I can say that uh, the developments are being made. There's a lot of um, activations that are going to be happening. And um, we definitely aligned our goals and visions on that goal. We are speaking a lot in uh, corporate Mumbo jumbo, I suppose, is probably yeah. a good way to put that. Should we should we give the the lowdown just some basic details let's, now at the top uh, yeah. of the show? Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's do some teasers. Yeah. Okay. Well, on site in Antwerp for the major, we're going to be going uh, and having a, having a live venue. Are we going to give the venue away now? Do we want to give people the opportunity? We to can. Start? Yeah, they can research it. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to take the floor with the details? Because you're the man who takes the notes. I'm just the okay. guy who brings up the problems. Uh, it's so we're we're doing a live show with an audience. So the audience is going to be 
like invited to come there. There are going to be some tickets that are going to be able, people are going to be able to purchase them for a low fee. A low uh, fee, indeed. Low fee. Uh, there will be some stuff included with that ticket as well. It's uh, Outlook in Antwerp. It's like a land center slash, they do like tr trading card game tournaments, all of these different things. And they have a, a nice, uh, not Outlook outpost. Um, and uh, yeah, they have a nice nice venue where we're, we're going to set up the show and have some guests on and uh, do cool stuff on the Wednesday before the before the playoffs of the major. So the evening before that. Start time, let's let's count eight, but maybe you come a bit early. So, you know, you take your seat in time. There's no, you're not going to be no walking around. When we start, we start. Like people that get there, there late, maybe they're not allowed in. Who knows? Maybe we have a bodyguard there that's going to like just escort you from the premises. There's a Isn't lot this of, sounding uh, exciting now? We're going to yeah. have security. We're going to, yeah, look, it is going to be a shit show, but it's going to be a bit of fun. Uh, so yeah. that's Outpost. I put the link on in if anybody wants to have a look. Outpost.be, check them out. Uh, with this little... We're trying to organize it so for the ticket price, it's going to be very cheap, guys. That you can maybe get a get a beverage with that. We'll we'll confirm that, uh, and we'll put the the tickets on sale. I think early next week. So yeah, I uh, mean, I think even tomorrow. I think we okay. do it tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure when. So maybe you go on Twitter. You follow us on Twitter. You put on notifications, and then when we uh, when we release it, uh, it's going to be there because it's going to be a very limited sale. There's not a lot of space, and we don't want to overcrowd the whole thing. So we want to make sure that. That people that are there can have like a good, uh, good time. Yeah. Okay. So I, well, I we've... found uh, the security guard. Oh yes. Is this? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I knew that was going to come in handy at some point, wasn't it? This is we're taking silly photos. All right. And uh, of course, we we have Jason Moses O'Toole with us. Jason, the major's about hey. to kick off, mate. And uh, I know that you're going to be working on a couple things on the side. Are you? Are you allowed? I don't know what's allowed to be said. I don't know if I'm uh, getting anybody into hot water here. So there's some exciting stuff on the horizon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I, we haven't really talked about any kind of announcement, to be honest with you. We've oh, just, just talking it's going to happen. It, just working on it, just cooking it up. So yeah, I think we're just going to come out with it. But, you know, when when it, when it the first episode comes out and just see what happens. Um, what are, what but, are you talking I mean, about? I don't know what you're talking about. What? I wonder. I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it notoriously vague. But I, I love gonna the be, secrecy. Yeah, I, I, I want to I wanna build up a little bit more excitement around it. Um, so there is something coming. Uh, I will be working with the fine people of HLTV. Oh. Um, and just found a way to, um, you know, I, I, you know, even not being, you'd obviously always rather prefer to be on like the live broadcast, right? The official, the official broadcast as a commentator. But that's no reason to not work the major. Um, so cooking something up and, uh, I'm, I'm just interested, you know, it, it's a chance really, um, since I'm not going to be there to actually experiment with some content that I've wanted to see how it would do in this kind of a, this kind of an environment. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna figure it out as we go. It's going to be okay. fun. All right. Well, that's a lot of things for people to look forward to over the next uh, couple of weeks for the major here. It is starting on uh, Monday, but Lucas, roll the bumper. Let's get into the show and let's start getting into the conversations. All right, we're back. Uh, My mic was muted. This is going so well. You're back That's on. Fine. It's all right. Good There's thing is now that when we actually fire you, we have a replacement. So exactly. Good. Where's where's <laughs> Dimitri, man? Like, what's going on? The hot mics here are like very tame. You know, it's all good. Uh, all right, we're going to fly through this, guys. So we're going to get into the recent news. The uh, topic that we're going to leave until last in the recent news is the first one listed. I don't want to get dug into this right now okay. because talking about the ESIC coach news could waffle on for a while. So what I want to do is I want to fly through all the rest of the stuff. And then once we've done that, we're going to get back to this. Now we're going to be starting as of right now, a 15 minute timer on my uh, lovely cracked phone screen here. And we're going to start talking about these topics. We're going to fly through them and then we're done after 15 minutes. And then we'll get into the coach band talk. You kind of looking to exit VP. Now this one, uh, I think I mentioned something on last week's show about yeah. the potential for these uh, CIS teams in the future to have different looking rosters. Now we've got a little bit more confirmation about that. Prof, you want to take this one? I mean, yeah, even we, as you said, we talked about it last week, uh, some things that we kind of heard, uh, in the, in the PGL RMR era, uh, it's things that we heard before, even as, as soon as the whole war broke out, that things are going to be difficult with some of these teams, especially when you're from definitely a European country versus what was usually called CIS. And now CIS is a term that people don't want to use anymore, which is also interesting, but let's just say, you know, you're a European guy in a CIS team or Russian based team. It's not probably going to be super amazing. So what we're hearing is that, yeah, he's looking at his option or, or he will 
be considering leaving the team or uh, you know finding a new team after the major essentially so yeah that's definitely a big red flag in terms of like the expectations we i have at least for the for the squad at the major yeah we can you're get not, in yeah, coverage jason you're not giving them the uh the dead team the dead team boost how do you feel about that one you know you're not excited to see a team that we know is going to be changing competing at the major. but i already saw them at the rmr being at the team and that was that yeah, wasn't that very was exciting that okay. was awful that was a fair counterplay <laughs> obviously answer. obviously the buff doesn't work for them so they're, they're dead <laughs> even yeah. when the way they play when they are a real team is kind of like they're dead so yeah but this is the thing they were they earned themselves a couple of extra weeks to live you know what i mean like by yeah. qualifying it was like now and they're still on yeah. life support so and, and this this might this might be it just it's just, just prolonging their suffering though yeah. like if you, if waiting, you think about it <laughs> waiting to exhale and ours as well when uh they play very very slow and disjointed because that's kind of what they've fallen into again right now uh, all right. Do we have anything else we want to? Because we can bring this stuff up when we're talking well, about. The, if the, we want to talk about something, it's just like where is. where is he? Where is he going to go? That is that is the exciting. The Who exciting does part. worse at the major than they think they should? That's going to yeah, be probably. the answer for that, right? Like you could you could make an argument for so many teams. I will say, an, yeah. I think I think Yekandar joining another team is like a ROPS level roster move. It's going to make somebody an instant contender. If he goes to the right team, it's instant contender. Yeah. But that's yep. the thing. What would the right to, like if we want to talk about? I feel like B two. Yeah, do you think that's the biggest? That's that's probably the biggest place where where there's like a, such a clear improvement, at least firepower wise. You know, that would be that would make G two another fucking super team on the on the list. You know, someone but like then, of course, if phase if phase failed the major somehow, that's also a place where that could be and that could be a fucking scary roster. Right I don't there. think phase would, would change anything, even if they bomb out of the major. I don't think you can Possible. change anything after the start of the year that they've Possible. had. Yeah, it's going to be curious to see how all that fallout goes. The uh, the, the forum commenters will say that uh, Jax can't be replaced by Akindar because Akindar is such a you know space taker in the team. So, so one of you three experts here explain to me how that's going to work. I I don't know. Jax don't plays know the bitch work. roles and he uh, he supports the team and all of this. Akindar obviously can't do that. I'm just being the devil's advocate because I completely agree with the things. The you have the Akindar in the team and you don't need the supports. You know, you just brute force brute force your way through. Essentially, you have Nico Hunter and Akindar all taking space and try like to it. try to beat that. But there's even a conversation like about Navi, right? Like what's going to happen with some of the Russian players in Navi? Right? He could be good, like let's say electronic doesn't continue for whatever reason then you can to, to navi would be fantastic yeah. and then you have but I, I think that's almost you wouldn't do that like why would you do that if you're leaving verts pro you're going to a european team why but i don't know i if i get to play with simple a bit yeah but like half of the reason is just to avoid this whole shitty situation and you don't really do that if you go to navi Sure. I mean, right. I think I think on paper that's actually a cool move. I think that would be just a question for Yekandar on an individual basis, like on a personal question. Would you really want to go into a team that's going to have similar similar issues on the other end? I guess it would be on the other side of things. I think I think look that that Yekandar to G two thing. I think it's really easy to to concentrate on the negatives, but you know I think that kind of conversation about like role swapping and like how's he going to fit directly into what Jax does as the bitch role. I think it's like a it's like a conversation from the outside that is interesting to have. But if you were ever a player on the inside of it, I think you'd be stupid not to find a way to make that work. You know, I think if if you're a player, you cannot be so pigeonholed into a role and players having their specific set roles within the team that you cannot adjust for a player of Yekandar's cal caliber. I, I, I've, I still have worries about G2, right? Anyway, for the major, right? Because it didn't look yeah. fantastic at the RMR. It, it, it was fine, but it didn't look fantastic. And then if you're Yekandar looking at that, right? Well, it's another choice. Okay, maybe Vitality for Masuda. Yep, that's right. one that I would have on the list like, as well. I, I get to play with Zaiwu, right? I get yeah. to, imagine if he gets to sit there and choose. I get to play with Simple. I get to play with Zaiwu. I get to play with Nico. Pretty good options to have. <laughs> pretty pretty good options to have right there. I think any of those choices that could come his way would be fantastic to make. So yeah, he's gonna have a lot of opportunities. Uh, all right, let's jump into the next bit here. Leo uh, DRK or Leo Drunky that he was uh, once known. Though we're dead naming now out here. Uh, he's been benched in uh, Zero Zero Nation. He's uh, not not around anymore now. This team, they stumbled a little bit. They had that upset victory against Liquid at the RMR right on Dust 2 where they just looked fucking crazy. And then after that, everything kind of fell apart. Um, I think individually speaking in the team, you'd say that Leo was was probably on paper the weakest. I don't know. I'd have to check the stats to make sure that that was the case. Statistically, the team, right? for the last three months or so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but does it, is there anything to really go here? Like We know there's a lot of talent within <laughs> Brazil and the region, but him getting benched is, is there a clear replacement for him is is this a change in the direction they want to go with the team like does, does this mean anything to anybody here yeah yeah go ahead 
I mean, uh, they obviously are shit <laughs> and not even close to the level where this team <laughs> should be, <laughs> just in what it is. Like, they have some of the best talents in, in the region and they can't even, like, get close to qualifying for the major and through the America's RMR. So this is, they didn't do anything online in Europe, in North America and anywhere. So the changes need to happen. Like, from what I heard, maybe two players were also going to get cut, but they can't find people to replace them or they can't buy the people that they want. And even like the big Uzera move and whoever, who else was it? And Luca Ozzy are, are both are not like looking as done deals. Like, so that's, that's a situation. Okay. All right. I couldn't, I couldn't possibly care less about this team. Not going to lie to you. I don't necessarily think they're shit. I just find nothing interesting about them. I think the most interesting conversation you can have about this team is, you know, looking back on the old Brazilian lineup when it blew up and they obviously had a little bit of bad blood, just looking at the different pieces and where they've all gone and who's doing the best in Cold Zera. Uh, I think being in the worst spot of, of all of them, considering Fallen and Fur now back at the major. Taco's got God sent, and he's leading the way. Uh, and and here's here's Cold Zera, you know. Uh, FNX back at the major as well. So yeah. I, I think the biggest problem for these guys is every other Brazilian team, you know, qualified to the major, qualified for Blast, or like has actually shown some real, um, some some real strength. So like, who do you go for if you're this team? Like, there's there's like four or five other Brazilian lineups that are quote unquote better than you in terms of your performances recently. So. What, what are you supposed to do? Maybe get start getting the best from like some of these teams after the majors concluded because we saw a lot of the names yeah. for RMR, right? Maybe like 9Z, there's a player that you want to try and poach from that team or, or something like that to, to bolster this roster. Um, I guess the MIBR guy, guys wouldn't be so easy to grab, but there has to be like a couple of names that they could look towards here. There's, there's definitely a lot of skill down there. But uh, yeah. I think you summarized that. Well, let's jump to the next bit. Lucky and Ave uh, on the way out of Australis and Modi coming in to coach the academy team. It's a bit curious, the whole Ave situation, right? They just kind of promoted uh, Trace, and then Ave was kind of there in the background, and now it's like, we'll see you later, Ave. This is a bit of a curious one, and it might come into the conversation we're having a little bit later about the ESIC and coach news. Does anybody think that that, that there's any implication here? Like, because what didn't Ave um, go down earlier? Was, right? Yeah, yeah, but exactly. could there be more? Um, I mean, he he already couldn't play. I actually forget what uh, what is what the length of his only this was only this ma only this major. Okay, yeah. So this would have been the last one. I'm not necessarily sure he had much to do with it because there was actually already some sort of an indication that this was going to happen, uh, or permanently anyway. From like an interview we did with Blame Meth, which was uh, at the R Mars, I think I think the closing one where he said something like, you know, we can be proud of what we did here or whatever. Um, in that, he actually kind of talked about, you know, he was asked about the difference between Ave and, and, and Trace, and he said something like, you know, I don't want to talk, talk badly about anybody, but Brace brings a lot of good leadership and stuff like that. And that already told me, okay, Ave is out. Like, there's no way he's coming back. Yeah. And blame F telling me, telling us this publicly in an interview, you know, like, there's, there's just no way. So that, that was already a big indica indication. It just seems like they prefer Trace overall. And this, this was just a plan for, from, from the start. And, and they just wanted to see how it goes. And if he, he was going to fit, he was gonna, just going to replace him permanently, right? Yep. So, and things have been looking good. Like no, the, no surprise. I, I would say that Australia have been looking like they're, yeah. I don't know if they're going from strength to strength, but they're definitely starting to look better as a team. Uh, whether or not Trace has anything to do with that, I, I guess there's some correlation there. Uh, the, the lucky situation, I guess that's less ex exciting, right? I'm not really sure where he's meant to be able to go. It's not like being in Australia did anything positive for his, for his rep. Might be one of these situations where he has to go back down to one of the more like middle of the pack type teams over there and then have to work his way up through it through in Danish Counter Strike again, which is great. They have a lot of room to do that. It's just like he takes this massive step up and now he's thrown back down there to fucking fight with everybody else again. Because like is anybody looking at what happened for Paul Lucky over in Australia and going, Yeah, let's let's snatch him up? Like that's not I, I yeah. can't imagine that's the case. Yeah, I mean it has to be like some seventh best danish team at this point that needs an offer <laughs> and has a decent igl that's gonna that's set him up down. but like it is how it is like yeah. he's not gonna go to copenhagen flames or i don't i don't know heroic, and heroic or who, who's the who is the seventh that's like best ecstatic masonic ecstatic's not gonna pick him up yeah probably not he's not good enough for ecstatic right now so who's who's left maybe yeah, like yeah. a agf or something i'm not he saying this is again. I'm not saying this is his best option, but isn't there a world where players that are in these situations in the future, like if you if you really want to keep competing and playing, why not reach out to North American organizations and teams? Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's going to be like chopping at the bit, you know, for lucky per se. 
But at what point do Europeans who like, you know, have the skill and have the experience and come from a different environment say, man, I wonder if I could go over to NA and kind of bolster up one of those teams and rebuild my name in that way. Cause Maybe you're you going to get, you're going to get, you're going to be in front of eyeballs way more often. Maybe you could join the EG uh, Academy team. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. yeah see, see which one. Maybe you could start an international squad of the uh, EG Academy team. The, the European division of the Academy system. Yeah. yeah why not? Let, let's get it going. Let's, because uh, let, let's just keep jumping around here, guys. I, I definitely yeah, want to fly through a yeah. lot of this news. Um, this EG stuff going on, if people missed it, it seems like such a weird situation. I don't know what the fuck is going on over there at EG, but it feels like every decision they make, it's somehow getting worse. Why are they going to grab three different teams? which like we already know you can't have multiple teams under the same name competing in the same tournaments like that 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 you just can't do then what they're going to have one team play in one of the academy leagues and then what does the other team do so yeah. i'm assuming and i can't really i i haven't spoken with anyone at eg and i i'm not even i guess someone will have to correct me if if they find i'm wrong but i believe this is the strategy that eg just used to develop their their system and their team over in league of legends where they just won lcs where they had kind of an academy team and then they kind of had like a amateur feeder team beneath that. And they've kind of been building players through the various stages of that system. And then they eventually found some diamonds in the rough through that method. Um, and if I'm correct, I think they're just kind of taking that philosophy and bringing it over to Counter-Strike. But obviously in an open circuit like we have compared to the closed circuit of, of LCS, it just feels and looks silly. And it probably is going to do more damage than it is good to the region overall. They've been on the phone with your best mate, Jonas Prof. What's going on here? Well, uh, Jonas did tell me that uh, EG was coming for some advice. Uh, so he just like kind of, you know, gave him the the wrong, the wrong In tips. Yeah, the wrong that, tips. That was, yeah, that's that's it. He just sent him for the loop. loop. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I like we already spoke in length about EG and how much of a mess it is over there. This just, it, I don't know. This doesn't help the mess. Like what? So what they wanted to get. Was it Carpet? Carpet, yeah, 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 and yeah, and astronauts. yeah, and party but, astronauts. But like, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be gentle about this. What? Who? Who do you uh, want from those teams? Like, out, out of the party astronauts, guys. <laughs> it, what? Do, what are you investing in here? The, the, I think the average age of the team was like 28 or some shit. Like, Jonji is that was like the only young member with Ben, who's the in-game leader. I wouldn't mind giving those two a crack and give them like maybe like Rush who can help like nurture them or whatever and, and help with all that experience he has. And then whoever else is left of the remnants of that team who actually has a good attitude and then somebody who is an up and coming talent from the region, like grab something. But right now trying to do this, it's like- Honestly, well, Ben Lee, better IGL than Stewie. I just, based I think, on one event that I watched him at. <laughs> so kind of a small sample size and a couple of maps. But I think there is some potential there. Uh, I think- it's cool. It's cool, y'all. It's cool what they're trying to do, like the idea. But the team that they have now is just doesn't work. Is it at cool? All. Is it, it cool? No, I feel like does Malik have anything to do with this? I'm not like, saying. What I'm is not going saying on? it's an actual good idea, but like whatever they're trying to do with Academy is like maybe try to kind of fix your current main team just for now, you know, because it's not doing anything. Um, and then after you do like two changes in your main team, then build your academy team. Maybe that's just the that's just the kind of the order I'd go. I th I think right now, right, you could have, and I, they're probably comparable, right? I'm sure if you put them in a server against each other, that that it'd be maybe a pretty close game, which is sad to say. But you could probably get one of the players on the current EG team salary before tax, and you could pay that entire salary to the five man roster of LFO, and that would that that would. That would be like a they would be happy with that salary divvied out five ways. Just get some Australians in the team. Like that's always the solution. No, I'm just for using that as an example. They right? need they like, need an academy uh, team, order just release their whole team. Two one plus one equals two. Just get whole order instead of the party astronauts. I think I think this is also like I think there's also a world where that this conversation minutes, even this conversation, yeah, we blew through that one. Focus, I think, on, on like, like obviously this is all correct, but I think there's like a completely different angle too that you can look at that, that makes this even more weird is, is, you know, 
I think at the moment for the younger teams in North America, I think Chad, you make a great point, obviously about the salary and what it means for the org. But I think for the, some of these younger teams and players in NA, I don't even think it's necessarily about the salary and about the money that they're like, they're chomping at the bit for. It's about the opportunities of saying, look, instead of paying us a high salary, like get us some boot camps in Europe. Let us go, let us go over there and let us play against European teams. Let us go spend a month there. Let us go play in some of the tier two events there and the cash cups that are there so we can get experience against NA teams. And I think that's a lot of the priority for some of the younger squads in NA at the moment. And then you also consider the fact that once you pick up two, um, I think if you have the main team uh, and then you have party astronauts and you have Carpe Diem, if you pick all two of those extra squads up is like only one of them can play. So all of a sudden, one of those teams is like, oh, like half of the calendar year that I'm used to playing in is now gone. Like, mm. and then eventually they're going to have no value, you know, to you as an organization and to to themselves to be able to pitch themselves to go elsewhere. So it just seems like really weird. I don't, I don't necessarily think that EG fully realizes the consequences it would have. And I mean, the other thing too is like, if you pick up those teams, like you have to know if you're on one of those squads that within a year, the roster is going to change. It's oh, going to yeah. be different. Like if you sign this contract as, as one of those teams, your team effectively, you've just signed the death warrant. And like, you should go into it knowing that your team has changed. You're not even playing to perform as a team. Then you're playing to yeah. perform as an individual to get promoted up the ladder, which right. then just that fucks everything even more. So, so it's like, I don't know. This one here it's is an weird, interesting yeah. one. It's yeah. an interesting yeah. one here for me, G let's I mean, jump in. Uh, uh, yeah. Just, just to add on one more, one more thing. On. It is one. Yeah. It is a it is a clearly a legitimate concern even for party astronauts because they would be the team who wouldn't be able to really play much because mm -hmm. Carpe Diem would be the team that would get to play the Academy League which because they're young enough for it because the Academy League obviously has those rules regarding ages you only have to you can only have like two players aged more than twenty one or some something yes. some rule really? like that. I don't remember exact, exactly yeah, the, but there is the, yeah. the, the we play one that, yeah, the that's play a rule? one yeah. Yo, that, that, that. that's an actual rule you can have I think it's two yeah. maximum of two players on above. 21 or something like that okay um and then the rest of them obviously have to be younger which is already uh oh we lost uh -oh. uh oh we lost in mid freeze well we know, know we know where he was going with this he's going to be yeah. a limiting factor to party astronaut there would be the team if they're an academy they wouldn't be able to play on that circuit then when it comes to the majors anyway you guys know how deep this rabbit hole goes we've spoken about it many a times uh, let's jump into the next one here. Let me to coach Tai Lu. Another individual wants to give uh, the, the Chinese side a crack. We've had Peacemaker give it a crack. Uh, we, we've had Jonta give it a crack as well. Now uh, over over here giving it a go is is Letney. So, um, Prof, what do you make of this this little little chop and change? Up just, do you think he's even going to be able to get anything done? So I'll just put this it has quote. To be hard language wise, man. Like the. Fuck. the the plan is to stay in Europe as much as possible to co complete, compete and practice in EU. We'll go back to Asia probably only for the Armour tournaments. I feel like that is kind of a cool thing to note, just that they are going to be trying to trying to just make Europe their home, essentially, and play as much as possible in Europe. So that's cool. Uh, what can he actually do as a coach? That is, that is pretty, I think that's going to be pretty limited, but, you know, it's better, better than nothing. Uh, they didn't even have a coach before, so that's cool. True. And uh, he has like a good relationship relationship with Bentet from the Extreme days because he was the analyst there. Um, so yeah, why not? Kind of makes sense to to get someone someone from the outside. Why didn't he coach in any team? I don't know, man. Probably didn't get an offer. Yeah, that could be the case too. Like, who, which NA team would he coach that he could get a, a salary from anyway? Right? There's there's probably not a whole lot. I don't know. I'd say outside of Liquid, I think pretty much everything's got to be open at this point, right? Like, is, is, is Malik, Malik still coaching AG though, right? He yeah. was gone for like two events with uh, illness. I think. Yeah. Back. yeah. I, I I don't know. I haven't really heard any like uh, news PR. I haven't seen any. Any. I haven't seen anything like official out of like the EG CSGO camp except for the owner tweeting that the results are unacceptable. That's my favorite tweets out of owners. Those are my favorite. I love those ones the most. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think like for him, Tyler must have some money of some variety. I'm not saying they have all the wealth in the world here, but they're probably paying something. And I guess that relationship with Ben Tent probably plays into it a lot there. I just hate the fact that it's going to have to be him talking to Ben Tent, who then has to translate it to the rest of the team. Like we always have this problem. It's like how the, how the information is going to get passed down. And then it's counter-strike lingo as well. So then you, you have, it's, Anyway, look, this experiment, if it works, that'd be great. Because, And I would love to see Tyler in, yep. in, in Europe a little bit more. I think Dan King was pretty impressive during the RMRs. Would be cool to see some more out of him. Um, all right, let's jump into God B being back. Welcome back, Striker. You're back yep. too. 
uh, God B, the, the Godfather, he's back in business. Um, now, NK kind of just got slid out with this here, Striker. What, what do you make of, of that situation with NK just, just being gone? Yeah, and they didn't even comment on his future whatsoever. So it it almost sounds like they don't even know what's happening at the moment. Coach Mark. Kind of... Coach Mark. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, another one, though. Now, every time a coach I mean, leaves, now I'm I just like... The thing is, it. I feel like we're looking a little bit too far ahead because I think nobody got a notice of any sort of a charge until very, very recently. So, like, and I think not even the, the, the people who are still coming know that they're getting banned. Like, a lot of coaches have just come up Wonderful. like, I don't even know if I'm if I ever encountered this bug and if I'm getting banned. Like nobody told me anything so far, right? So it seems like these are only going to come. Um, and I feel like they're probably going to learn about them probably on the same day that we do. So that's probably one thing, unless they've, they've you know, they've seen the leaked, leaked list, which apparently is circulating somewhere. But anyway, clearly not everybody knows. So I don't think that like any of these coach decisions are, are related in any way to, to the actual d investigation. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Now, I think having Gobby back is a, obviously a big thing for the German scene. Um, it was obviously the guy that's been yeah. the biggest in-game leader out of that that region for a very, very long time. Um, kind of handed the, the torch over towards Tabson, who either picked it up reluctantly or he's picked it up and he's smashed it. But either way, um, having him back, and he's always one of these minds that we would talk about here. It's kind of, I would I would imagine, Jason, uh, a positive going into the major to have Gob behind you might do, might do something for their their confidence and it seemed like in interviews that he was contributing to the team in the lead up to the rmrs as well as you even make a comment or something I, I don't know if anyone caught that um but i swear that there was a comment made about how how gob was helping with the team but what's mm -hmm. your take on this jason someone who's obviously seen gob through through the through a lot of it 1.6 and all that yeah i mean i love it i think obviously i think he's a great in-game leader and i think he's one of those guys who has like a super nerdy mind for the game so i think there's going to be a few more like tricks and little cheesy things that pop up like little gifts of weight that we see teams exploiting like throwing a smoke that intentionally is going to have like a gap in it that you can exploit and i think we'll see him we're kind of bring in and innovate a lot of those things with big look i, I just kind of hope at some point big gets over the hump because I feel like this is the team that eternally like does good enough to get you feeling like they're hitting a good stride and then they disappoint you. And then it just kind of waffles back and forth. And every time I get on board big and I'm like, these guys are starting to look good and they're starting to have some solid upsets. They just kind of shit the bed on me. So I hope, I hope it actually propels them to do something cool at this, at this major. Um, and then when it comes to MKJ, uh, I mean, speculation aside you gotta feel bad for him considering like how are you ever going to keep that position away from god b within that organization it was never going to happen god b just gets to come back and like snap his fingers and it's like all right well see ya yeah and sprouts like spoken for now right they got barry over yep. there as the coach too so for nk it kind of puts him in a rough spot so be interesting to see what his future is going to look like over there he's got um, a decent resume though so he might, he might yeah. be able to land at a good place true true uh, all right, let's jump into talking about uh, this change up with the ESO qualification system. I think this was the EPT, right? They've dropped the points. They've uh, done something which is a little bit closer to like blast, right, Prof? Yeah, I mean, it was just confusing as fuck. No one understood what was right, going on. I was on. the one having to script the fucking videos where we got Jason as, what were you, Jay? You were all I was the wizard. I was the Yeah, like I was I'm trying else. to work out how to script this shit so that it can like seem digestible for people That's the home. best thing that came out of it, essentially. Okay. It was, yeah, yeah, the whole system with, EPT points going through these like ESL Pro Tour tournaments and this this much points for this thing. Like it it was like the idea was cool, but then number one was kind of too complicated. Number two, the amount of points you get for winning like a DreamHack Open is the same amount of points you get for finishing last at ESL Pro, like a ESL Pro League, not literally like finishing next to last. Uh, someone's going to quote this from ESL and say this is not actually correct. It's actually five points more. But essentially, you couldn't actually make any progress as a team that's playing the tier two, tier three circuit. So it was kind of pointless. It was just about the big teams and playing the big events and whatever. So uh, it kind of, kind of is just pointless in the end. Just use the ESL ranking and that's it. Yeah. The new one, think, the, the new system is much better. I think we'd all agree, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that it just removes a lot of the confusion about two different rankings used, and you know, like you have to keep track of ESL Pro Tour ranking, which only takes into consideration ESL events. But then there's also the ESL World ranking, which takes into consideration other events. It was just so unnecessarily complicated that I feel like this is a welcome change. I think yeah. the most confusing thing about it is the fact that they change the qualifications system each and every year. It's like every every yeah. year there's like two different yeah. systems. I'd like them to just be done at some point. Let's just get there. Yeah. It'd be nice to just have something be consistent, right? The same yeah. with like this conference. Like we know 
the thing is though like uh, before i get stuck into that too much i understand why they're doing like a soft yeah. entry with the conference this time because last time when it was a band-aid with pro league that's when we had all this the stink kicked up about the north american slots remember so yeah i don't know it'd just be nice to settle into some form of consistency instead of everything constantly changing and having to re-explain it to viewers and having for us to relearn like let's just have a system that's good and that works and that we like and then we don't have to keep fucking chopping and changing what we're doing all the time um, all right, we won't stick on that too long. There's uh, the other topic over here. This one didn't make it in only just. This is the uh, the the CCT, which stands for the, that's the Champion of Champions Circuit, I do believe. Sure, uh, yeah. yeah. Now there was an announcement about this last year, wasn't there? We're getting an announcement about yep. it again. Um, well, this is a the, this is essentially like a second season of it, you know, because the current okay. current circuit is kind of coming to an end with the with the land sweet land thing. Obviously, I think there's still a couple of events on in in that and like the Pinnacle Championship and stuff like that that are kind of like under the same umbrella. But this is basically like for the next year and a half after that, you know. Okay, that's that's basically the idea. But this is I think this is just showing that like the Counter Strike world is is healing because we're getting more tournaments now popping up. Right, there was a period of time there where. It just felt like the only two were Blast and ESL. But if these guys can be competitive with that like prize money and the scale of the events and the event conditions and all that kind of stuff, this is another uh, another big big name starting to come back onto campus, right? And then if Starletter runs an event again, or uh, we know that PGL obviously has done the last couple of majors, it's it's obviously good to have more competition. So it'll be interesting to see how this one kind of pans out a bit. Yeah. I don't the... want to go back to the silly season, though, where everyone's at an event every fucking weekend in an arena. I would really like to avoid that. That would I... be nice. How are you... Can can the tier one teams even have the time to do this? I mean, I would assume it's, it, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I would assume it's something similar to like what we've seen so far with like the pinnacles and and the, this kind of stuff, like that we saw maybe Gambit play in a couple, but then we saw maybe other teams play in a couple, get invited to the playoffs and stuff like that. This is kind of like the same. This is the same like set of events essentially that we've seen some of these top teams attend before. So it's it's not impossible for sure. Mm. That's crazy though. Like if you lose you like just ESL and Blast together have like 170 some days of the year, 180 days of the year. You know, you're gonna yeah. add does this graphic on HLTV say 44 regional open qualifiers and 44 online series? Yeah, yeah I don't you know, know how to... that's gonna work in it, across oh, like whatever like you a have year, to maybe. take it into account that there, this is also year and a half, North right? America, South America, right. not not Asia, I don't think so, but no. they have like a lot of different European uh parts and essentially the the idea is there's uh i don't know like seven eight nine tournament organizers which have their region some like south south europe east okay. europe whatever and then those regions will have their qualifiers in some way uh for those regional teams but then that will feed into like a global or european or north american thing so i think the north american part is very interesting though because what they announced or are at least what's uh, what's stated on the website Eight online tournaments for NA, two studio lands with three hundred fifty thousand dollars of prize pool. So that that is essentially bringing like the tier two, tier three competition that we have in Europe into NA. And okay. uh, if that is if anything, that is what what any people have been like asking for for so long. So now they're gonna get it, and it's gonna be interesting to see how it pans out. Like my biggest concern is like who who is gonna play this? Who are the teams that are gonna be playing this? Who's going to be watching this? Um, we'll see. We got lots of teams. We don't have a, we don't have a lack of we don't have a lack of players. We got a lack of like orgs in some regards, but we got plenty of teams. So I guess there's more opportunity for for teams to get involved here. We'll we'll see how that one all pans on out. Um, let's jump into this N one moment, shall we? Because we're already 36 minutes in, boys. Okay, we haven't we even started talking about the majors. Yet. Yeah, so, speed up. Yeah. Uh, okay, M1 moment. Lucas, bring this one up, bro. He's tweet. He finally got his his stickers, everybody. Uh, so this was obviously like Christmas Day for the players just the other day. Everybody uh, would have been waking up to this, the update with all, all the changes and whatnot. They, we have new glitter finishes on the stickers now. I think nice. it's like to note, uh, they didn't do the patches, like the team patches on the, on the models this time around. They've gone back to this kind of signature situation with um, the, the players and, and the teams having their in-game stickers. Uh, there's still the spray cans that come with it and all that jazz and you can do the pick them. So there's nothing really new in, in, in that regard. Um, so yeah, that, I guess happy for Brokey, happy for this new gen of players to be, to get in their stickers. And we had uh, a second part of this in the N1 nice one, number one, the, the moment, uh, was, was the reaction from the, the bad news Eagles guys who I think out of all the teams, this one Something obviously means an awful lot here. If you didn't catch this, 
Uh, this is them going nuts. We won't be able to hear it just for, for Striker, Prof, and, and Jason right now. But if you miss, this is on Reddit. And this is them uh, were playing as they as the stickers have dropped. And it's going to be interesting to see, you know, them getting all the signature profits and I assume all of the sticker money profits, just just how much a team like that could make. Any, that that's like, could be their salaries for the year paid for with just one major, you know. I don't know how much money we're talking. Striker, do we have a rough... Look, I, I, from... It's hard, right? It's a bit hard. It's also, like, kind of like to predict what it's going to be this time around because, like, obviously at the Stockholm Major... You, you could realistically assume that it was going to be more than uh, than previously just because it was the first major in two years and stuff like that. So, like, people were probably way more interested in stickers at that point than they are now because they've yes. already gotten some, like, half a year ago, right? But, like, we're talking, like, well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars for the team stickers and then something on top of that for the player stickers, um, for, like, the signature stickers. And, like, as far as I know, for, like, the contender teams, it was, like, one million per team-ish. You know, somewhere around that last time around. So, like, this is this is more than one year's worth of salary for a team. You know, if you yeah. add on the signatures on top of that as well. This is kind of how, like, obviously to a broader scale, especially if you're winning things like the TI or placing like within the top five or whatever, because we're talking millions of dollars, depending on how high up that ladder you would come in TI. But this was that whole model that it felt like was available in Valve events, right? You didn't have to be anybody; you just had to be five individuals together who qualify and win. And then if you win and you're not represented by an org or whatever, you're going to make a shitload of money, right? Like yeah. that, this yeah. is kind of the different way of doing that. But we have just had our orgs go on steroids in Counter-Strike. Um, and, and we ended up with that not being, uh, I guess, a regular thing because it's happening with Bad News Eagles. It's something that uh, it's happened with one other team before, right? Like I think Dat team was, um, I don't yeah. think they had an org, right? That was like Flamey's, got, Flamey's mob. Yeah, and they got flip side after, after that. Oh it yeah, became, that became Flipside essentially. Yeah. Blade, uh, Flamey, World Edit maybe. Didn't uh, Flipside yeah. already exist? I'm pretty sure Flipside already existed. <laughs> mm. I thought they just went over there, didn't they? I mean, yeah, it's not that they made the org Flipside, but they got signed by Flipside. That's what I'm trying okay. to say. Yeah, right, uh, right. People are th talking about like uh, uh, other nice things. Uh, yeah, uh, the Bad News Eagles guys were visited by the Kosovo Prime Minister. Uh, also, HLTV's Twitter account was followed by the former mongolian president Damn. after ihc qualified so oh, shit. that's shit, crazy actually shit, 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 shit's popping happening. Off. It, yeah it, it's popping off in the in the last week all right pre-pandemic right. i got invited to mongolia because the mongolian uh like olympic association wanted to throw some esports stuff so oh, i'm just it? saying i'm ready to go to mongolia whatever that's on my bucket list of places to go all right there one of go. the places one of the few places you haven't been jason i imagine yeah i'd um, love to go to mongolia all right, let's. Uh, can we jump straight into the the Skinnier stuff, Lucas? And then going through Isik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not not missing Isik. Yes. I just want to have it so we've got everything else out of the way, because this is obviously going to be more of a lengthy conversation. All right, ready to kick it off uh, with uh, who wants to be a Skinnier? Everybody, you know what to do right now. Type bits into the chat. This is a quiz. Uh, we're going to be doing five questions with multiple choice answers. Jason, you're going to be ready to uh, attack this. Oh, I'm doing something with this. Uh, well, you're the yeah. guest. So, okay. yeah, you're, yeah. I'm going to read out the questions. I'm going to read so, you the potential options. You're going to answer the questions. And the people do at I home get, win. Do I get like a phone or Twitch chat or... You can, we, ask, we... you can ask Striker. Striker. Striker will help. Ah! I prefer yeah. Twitch chat. <laughs> I don't know. Striker's only pretty good with this stuff. Uh, I mean, I've, I think my record's pretty all right. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll help you. Now maybe he might stand back here. But anyway, yeah, let's go. Bitskids in chat. Who wants to be a skinny in air? Question one. This is where there'd be some dramatic music, maybe a change in lighting. Uh, question one. What is the most played map across all majors? 140, uh, 149 maps played. Is it Inferno, Mirage, or Dust 2, Jason? I have to, I mean, I'm just going to go with Mirage. Do you want to, do you want to ask Striker? Yeah, now that you say that, I want to ask Striker. <laughs> I think you should ask Striker. It's, it's, it's not Mirage, I'll tell you that. Okay. Well, then shit. Uh... That's I just want to say that's the worst phone a friend ever. I'm supposed to get the right answer. From <laughs> Look, I can I not, can tell you the right answer, but I feel like it's I feel like the second map should be relatively more obvious. Okay, we're going Inferno then. There, there you go. go. There you go. It's the, the correct answer is I could even say before the green light comes on, the correct answer is Inferno. All right, question number two. Moses used to be good at these things. What CS event took place in Belgium before the PGL major? Arctic Invitational, DH Rotterdam, or the I don't fucking know esports. 
Charleroi, Charleroi, some fucking hard to pronounce name. What a wild ass questions are these? Okay. Well, Which, if it ends up being Rotterdam, I'm going to be a little bit frustrated. So I'm just going <laughs> to cut that one out right out of the gates. You want uh, to striker again? <laughs> <laughs> Striker, what have you got for me this time, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it is the third one, isn't Charlotte? All right, let's go. Charlotte, he's first. That's, at, at That's the point, one I would have guessed. That feels like it would be Belgian. Yeah, yeah. And, and here's where they had our favorite, Jason. I don't know if you remember this at the time, but uh, they had, um, like, you know, like a kiss cam or like a dance in the crowd oh, cam or whatever. Yeah. But it was didn't, a sniper rifle. Did win this? Oh, didn't perfect. They have a, yeah, it was a think, sniper cam. It was and there was the, the... It had like the scope of a sniper, I guess. There was also yeah. the singing. There was also the, the singing was really bad, and the DJ was really bad too. But yeah. it was entertaining. They gave it a Wait, go. You know, what, what were you different. doing there? I wasn't. What? I was watching at home. And then oh, okay, we, gotcha. we used the sniper cam on the show. We had our own sniper filter just to, just to show everybody. What, just, what uh, year was this event? I don't even remember anything about this event. 2019, it, I think. This was like when Vitali came up, which is... 2019. Yeah. End of 2019, 2019, I think. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Started? Um, okay. almost ancient history now. All right, uh, question number three. What does E6 stand for? Extra slow in catching cheaters, <laughs> elementary school inner circle, or eSports Integrity Commission? Strike, I don't need you for this one. I'm going to go with eSports <laughs> right. Integrity Commission. <laughs> now, after we have a conversation later, you might be leaning towards extra slow in catching cheaters. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be very excited to have that conversation shortly. All right, we're, we're smashing through this one. We're three from three. Question number four. Which major attending team is currently not in the top 30 of the HLTV ranking? Is it A, MIBR, B, 9Z, or C, Imperial? Oh, oh, this is a trick question. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of trick questions here. I'm gonna, MIBR has been around. I'm going to say they're in the top 30. Look, all of these uh, questions are just off of the forums or comments it's really rough actually I, like i know I, what it, I know what the answer is so i'll I'll just i'll just serve as a secondary i mean does it have a number in it striker i was gonna say imperial just because i think 9z probably with this most recent one after some of the wins that they took at the rmr probably popped up a bit well i hope your mentions are ready jason i'm gonna be locking in c imperial and uh the correct answer is the Imperial. Now they did edge into the top 30 just the other day, didn't they? Yeah, Last for week. a week. Yeah, before yeah. the other RMR finished. And there we go. And then they're straight back out. So um nice. that's that's it, unfortunately, for Imperial. They might be able to make it back in the, the whole thing is like, yeah, after the after the latest ranking update, all of the Imperial fans were like, so Imperial play football question mark the classic <laughs> Brazilian jokes. Um uh, good okay. times, yeah. All right, question number five. And remember, guys, type Bitskins in chat. However many questions Jason gets correct, you could win that skin or color oh, value. This is for all the marbles. Which in-game leader posted a 1.31 rating in the IEM Dallas EU qualifier? Was it A, Dexter, B, Nickelback, or C, Hooksy? Less. Not going now, I can Dexter. tell you that Copenhagen Flames didn't qualify. Who did they qualify? In Tropic, mm -hmm. I was gonna go. I would have gone. I was gonna go with Nickelback, to be honest with you, but could be way off on that one. I don't know. Let's just roll the dice. I don't know what striker involved. I in actually don't know. I'm, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not Dexter, and that's that's much. Twitch chat. Start spamming some things. Let's see what it is. Uh, the, there, there's question marks. There's, there's something about Bitkins? Jack to pop it on. Nickelback is makes okay. sense. Just is the on. winner. I was gonna go Nickelback. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll lock, lock it Nickelback. in. B Nickelback. Correct answer is. Please, Nickelback, nice. Jason. Five from five there. We get across the line. That's who wants Thank to be a you, Regis. Yet. Brought to you by Bitskins. Now, Lucas, our lovely producer, is going to be drawing a winner out of you, mob, who have been spamming away. The uh, winner is Cheerios0720. <laughs> now, this is great because Jason's cereal wearing beans. a cereal T-shirt. And Cheerios, yeah. this one is not rigged, but you'll be winning the uh, $50 skin. Congratulations. You can thank Moses. Send him a nice message you on Twitter. You could almost say that he's the lucky champion. I, uh, here we go. I he found the... something for you, Moses. If oh, you God, look perfect. at the, the stream. Yeah. I found this ah, one. It is. Oh, dear. This is what that's, it was. that's not good. You should yep. not be putting that up in a giant arena. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It's not a good idea. It was it's... great, though, you know? They had a good time with it, Jason. They were just wearing right up the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the game, yeah. yeah I mean, even good. if they don't put it up, maybe you get no scoped anyway, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, so that's Skin Yonair done. Uh, that is all of the recent news done other than this whole E6 situation. So now we're going to talk about the E6 situation. So right now, I just want everybody to like center themselves. We've had all the fun. We've had the nice one moment. We're getting excited about Bad News Eagles, getting their stickers. We've done the quiz. There's a couple of funny comments in there. We've gone over all the recent news. We've, sp- we've spoken about a lot. Now, we want to get into even more. Um, and I, I really... <laughs> Really didn't want to have to talk about this this evening yeah. when we could have had so much fun stuff to talk about with the major. Um, but we have to talk about this. We don't really have um, too many ways around it, unfortunately. So let's let. I can start us somewhere if you'd like, because I go, have a particular thing that's really uh, that, that, go that's for it. Really upsetting me about go this. off king. Let's go. Um, where I was reading this earlier. Where is this statement? Um, yeah, we are the view that all spectator bug variant related occurrences, regardless of apparent harm or harmlessness, or, or like you know, they don't they essentially don't care if an advantage was gained by by using the bug. And honestly, I that part pisses me off because I find that to be such bullshit in cases where a coach has used it once. Like if you're going to say that a coach was like cheating by like one one round in this situation. I think you better be able to also prove that they like wanted and tried and, and were attempting to gain an advantage. I think the advantage matters very much because I think about when I was coaching, I never actually encountered the bug myself, but I'm trying to imagine what I would have done. And I probably would have done exactly what these guys do. You notice you have the bug, turn the monitor off, step away from the screen, whatever it might be, but you probably don't deal with it until after the round is over. And I, and I find this like really unreasonable to ban coaches from like a dream that they've been chasing after for years over one round um and also just like the the pr damage from like accusing someone publicly of cheating like this like you you, i actually think that it is even more important that you prove that these coaches were attempting to cheat and that these coaches were actually trying to gain an advantage and the players were trying to gain an advantage from it one round is such is complete bullshit in my mind i, I just i find it horrible i find it a horrible thing to do let yeah okay let's let's take a a step or two back just for a second here um, okay. for everybody because no, I I I think that there's so many layers to this and I yeah. where you're at is is a point that it's gotten through through a lot of further steps, right yeah okay so, so just quickly for maybe people who are the un- uninitiated um there was obviously coaching bug that happened with a lot of online Counter Strike we had Mia Mia Slavinsky and Steve uh, basically they were the ones who spent all the time. Uh, they, I don't know if they found the bug, it was reported to them, right? But they were the ones who were, were leading like an investigation to collect all the information, right? They had like the, the scripts or whatever the fuck that they had to be able to work out who was using it where and what demos. And all of this information was handed over to ESIC. Now, ESIC, if you're not familiar, we just had that funny question that Prof had put on in there uh, about ESIC. It's meant to be the Esports Integrity Commission. Let's start on that level right there, j- just yep. first and foremost. This is a commission for the, that I already take issues straight away. Anything... This I'm going to go on so many tangents here. I cannot wait. Anything <laughs> that is esports titled and representing Counter Strike shouldn't exist. It should be a Counter Strike Integrity Commission. I don't want a guy like okay. First of all, if it's to do with match fixing and gambling and all that kind of stuff, I think Ian's probably great at that. He did that with traditional sports. He knows what to look for in the numbers and the betting websites and all that kind of stuff. That's his wheelhouse. What isn't is in-game Counter Strike stuff. I don't think ESIC should be putting their eyes on something that they don't understand. And when we had Ian on the show. And he spoke about it. I want Striker or Prof to kind of help me out here. But when he was on and we asked them, like, who was looking at these things? And he said, oh, uh, wasn't it high up people in, in some of these companies ESL, who were running the events? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he said so, that the ESL employees were a part of the people that gave him feedback about what is what what he is looking at, essentially. Unless it's me, House Levinsky, I don't know who else at ESL should be looking at that and giving yeah. an expert opinion. I don't, yeah, I, yeah, but I, I don't think he understood it to be like people like Ole Schultz or or Carmack, you know, that those kind of people like very high or, on top. Yeah. Of, but they the shouldn't ESL. be looking at Counter Strike stuff either. Or yeah, but yeah, I, and um, there's, there's no way. That, there's Michal no way. isn't that, an ESL employee either, right? Uh, he's not anymore. He's a freelancer. That works. Is he? No. Nope. Yeah. yeah, he's he's freelance now. Yeah. Okay. Well, regardless, if the people that we're talking about here are like the Uli Schultzes or the the Carmax or Alex Carmen, those guys shouldn't be looking at high level Counter Strike stuff and making a decision. I don't I don't know what their level of expertise at playing professional Counter Strike is to to look at a demo and a situation and understand what's gone on there. I don't know if they've ever been in a coaching slot in a Go TV uh, in a server in their life. Like this is this is this is where I'm already drawing issues. There should be a Counter Strike Integrity Commission. Because Counter-Strike, we have so many things. Just like in broadcast that Jason and I work, 
you should be a Counter Strike broadcast team, not a fucking esports because it's so tailored to what we're doing. Yeah. Everything what we're doing is tailored to what to this game. It's very specific. So first, I take issue there with the whole esic thing, right? Like that that's that's out the gate. If it's to do with match fixing because of betting and odds being manipulated and people moving large sums of money around and that shit. Great. I think that Ian is obviously an expert in that because of what he's done in traditional sports. But when we're looking at this, I have issues already. The second thing I have issues with is the timing of this. Now, listen, yeah. listen to this, boys. The coaching bug investigation part one results were sent to ESIC on the 13th, 13th of September in 2020. But that is that is 2020. At this point, what that's a, that's a long time ago now. That's a, that's a, that's a, and and, so, and these demos are backdated from that point, right? Those demos are older than when that first part of the investigation was submitted. The second part of the investigation was submitted on the 27th of October in 2020, right? The, 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 the first batch was the 37 coaches who ended up getting banned. The second batch was all the remaining static view incidents, which is like the Zach one, the Halley one. There was overall 52 coaches in that one. And then the, the last one, right, was it concluded on the 30th of March in 2021. So the following year, but still within like a roughly six month range. And that's the free roam one. That's the one that you see Peacemaker using. So they have all the dates of when all of these things were submitted. And just now, three days before the major, they go and they announce this. Why now? Why now? Why, why have we waited since the 30th of March, 2021? And not only that, like the first batch of when all the coaches were banned, if, if all the information is still, if, if the answer is the bullshit spiel that we got last time he was on about resources, then you shouldn't be the arbiter of Counter-Strike and who's getting banned and not getting banned. You don't have the resources to do it. Why are we then giving you the ownership to be able to come in at any point, knock on the door and go, yeah, you, you fucks are out. Why did this not happen sooner? Why is this happening now? Why are we having to talk about this again? Yeah, yeah. It, it'd be nice just to get it fucking behind us for once. That, that's like, can we just stop coming back to this each and every time? I'm with you. Yeah. It's just I mean, so frustrating. Just... I can't hear that we don't have enough resources. Then you shouldn't be the commission who's deciding these things. It's and simple. It's also, yeah, I mean, it's this. It's actually a kind of a danger to integrity on its own because you're kind of they're kind of making the decision on when to ban these people, even though they've known for this in, entire time, right? If so, Zach like, knew, obviously, wouldn't yeah. his ban already be up? Yep. Same with Hallie. His ban yeah. would already be up. Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> like if if he if he had gotten banned at the same time as everybody else, or you know before the Stockholm major at least, you know Stockholm major would have been the major he would have missed, and by now he would have been long long after you know uh, going through the ban because like it was just one round like and based on those demerits or whatever, it's a five month ban and that's in the like without concessions. So like it would be well and truly over by this point for I would I would imagine like ninety five percent of these new cases. But and this then, is it's it's such an incredible level of disrespect, and this is why I think like if you're going to do this to someone, like you had better be sure that they were actually actively trying to cheat and gain advantages. Like this, it's it's actually insane to just kind of derail someone's career, and like not even just the coach's career, the players who've been practicing and training with them for the past however long it's been. Like it's actually it's, it's actually wild to me that it's even like a, able to be like this three days before a major. I'd be so fucking pissed. I mean, you know, gift. Give, give, I mean, take it aside whether you you know cheat or not. Like I would be fucking furious if I was sitting there and I was like, dude, I got this bug that's not even an intentional thing. It just can happen randomly, and I solve it after one round. And I'm what? Like I'm I'm banned from playing in a major for being at the major. It's just it's crazy to me. I, I have like, like the, the thing is next, right? Then we get into the detract. Cause if, if we can like, as a group, we can go, okay, yeah. ASIC, first of all, probably don't have the expertise and, and, and the manpower to be able to handle this. The fact that they've done this with this timing, like we are talking, I'll read it again for everybody. The last investigation, the results were sent to ASIC on the 30th of March, 2021, the 30th of March, 2021. Yep. We are now April 6, 2022. Why over right. a year? And then to come out, what like, and then to ban three of them before the major, and then not give out all the names. Where did where is the evidence coming from? Who is the person posting the evidence of the YouTube videos, and who has made those YouTube videos? It's on the, uh, it is it's on the Mayhouse ESIC website, YouTube. I think, isn't it? I, oh, I no, don't know who it is. is. The, the links themselves are up there. Yeah. But the, the evidence is, is all is all Mihaus from his research, right? So from what he did, he submitted to them. They're just if even if they are posting that on their website, they're just regurgitating what he already did. And then if we're going to agree that these people, these individuals who are the ones looking at it, Jason, were you reached out to, to look at any of this material? 
Nope. I don't even know. I've never, if you... I've never, I've never even spoken to anyone from Music to be honest. But this is what I'm talking about. So, like, wh what, where would you, where would you go? Who are experts who could look at this stuff and make a, make a call on it? I don't I think. Look... At, I think at this point, and this is, I think this goes back to your point of making sure Counter Strike people are the ones actually looking at it. I think most of these decisions would be made with like a more of a business and PR perspective in mind rather than like the Counter Strike perspective. Yeah, yeah, but the, the which it, is yeah, which is not the way it should be. I, I yep. But this this is the problems that we've obviously been having for a really long time, right? Like so, and then the other thing is like you're saying, okay, so I can understand if somebody cheated and there was you could you could watch it back and there was malicious intent. They used it multiple times. Like okay, then we're starting to build a case. We have Zona as an example of that, right? As somebody who used it multiple times, we we, we have Hunden who, from what we're watching, it feels like he is being uh, the the way that the evidence laid out is to be boosted into a position to trigger the bug. Okay, we have those people who. Where once where all the chips are on the table, it looks like they are intentionally using this or they were intentionally using this, right? Then you have people like you're saying who it happens, they, they're in the bug. Okay, um, shit, the round's live. Um, uh, fuck, the round's over. A minute, 55 seconds plus freeze time. Okay, what? Well, maybe two minutes. Okay, guys, max. tech pause. I have this weird bug. Admin, yep. I was frozen in this position on the map. Like, I'm back. Um, yep, we're going to reconnect the server. Yeah. But, okay. I, mean, like, I, was... I mean, I can tell you my first priority as a coach was never to disturb the players during like a live round situation. Like number, no matter what's happening on my screen, no matter what's going on in, in my world, it's don't fucking disturb the players while they're playing. Keep them focused. Yeah. And you're, it's also that like yeah, a lot well, of the time you're just advised to wait until the round is over to raise an issue, right? Like because of, yep. you know, some of these issues that happen with like a misplacing a bomb and shit like that. You just like once damage is done, basically, like a lot of these rules say, you shouldn't like uh, uh, restart around, right? So like, if you're kind of like, if your mindset is 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 set up around that, then you're gonna be like, okay, I'm just gonna shut up. I'm not gonna, you know, talk about this. What I'm seeing on the screen, I'm just gonna wait until the round is over, and then we can sort this out while there's free time. We can pause the game. I'm not gonna affect anything, right? So that's that's also what I've been advocating for: just not labeling all of these people as cheaters just because they happen to to get into the bug once you know like that's that that's also that's really crazy to me if it triggered once right if it triggered once and never again in the history of all of these demos and whatnot and i know there's an argument of now or they had a grace period to come forward and say you know whether they're involved in in the if, if they used it or not over the years probably in some of these instances with the amount of counter-strike matches that are being played and some of them are dating years back there's a real there's a real chance that they just don't remember thinking about how many yeah. rounds of counter especially if the camera was just like locked in a in a wall position or something like that right and they 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 didn't do anything with it because this is the thing the the release that came out today is saying that peacemaker Halley, and zach so peacemaker of imperial Halley of spirit and, and zach of 9z are banned right and and that but there's a list of, of many more right like peacemaker so, is Four years ago, uh, Hallie's yep. is three years ago, and Zach is Ooh. 2020 and 2018. So, uh, look, uh, this this is the this is the thing with this three. So, these three are named. Striker, you made a tweet today saying that there's a fourth. What, like, there's but, apparently like th there's been talk behind the scenes that there's a fourth who's who's at the major who's not going to be suspended from the major, but who's probably going to face some sort of a charge afterwards. And this is because like this this has to do with in relation to like the third person bug because these two these three people have only have been involved with the static one which is Hallie and Zach and then the free roam, free roam one which was peacemaker and essentially the way that Isik presented this was that these two were more serious especially the free roam one was the like the most serious then was the static one and then the third person one they deemed as like the least serious and also that was the one that couldn't be couldn't be triggered by yourself. It was like kind of like a software issue that you only happened for one round and it, you always got out of it after the one round. So there, there was no way for you to, to be in it longer than one round and it wasn't intentional. Like it was probably not enforceable, you know? And so that's why got more variants than COVID. What the fuck? That's like, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I was I was actually feeling the same way when I was writing the article, like calling it variants and shit. I was like, where the what the fuck are we talking Dude, about? Dude, on this official release, Zach, what is is banned for half a round? Oh, the it's 2020 a version is is no, it's, it's a, round. I know, well, but there are two separate things: 2018 yeah. for one round and 2020 for half a round. He yeah. actually got the bug and left in the middle of a round, and they're he's getting wrecked for it. Yeah, but this is the thing: it's so, they've <laughs> gone super, they've gone super black and white in, in how they're in how they're dealing with this, right? And a lot of this. Now, here's the thing: like whether or not I think Peacemaker was actively cheating in the clip of him or not, that is not what I'm discussing here. What I'm discussing is. I went into the demo. I downloaded the demo on the YouTube link of the on the Inferno one where it flies through apps. 
You can download the demo, it's there. But one of the problems I had with the demo is I tried to listen to see if Modi, who was the player defaulting up second mid, could actually hear the footsteps of the players pushing apartments. On his screen, he lobs an aid into the window. He runs all the way up. He's he's like, I call it like speed walking. He's still kind of making some steps, but, but not really. And he gets to the very bottom of apartments with the first step and stops like he's heard something. Right now, I don't know how this, I haven't synced it up to have the timing of where peacemakers flying and shit, but he could have heard that apartment's push, right? And I'm not, I'm not saying he did or he didn't, but here's the kicker, guys. In the demo, there's no footsteps. You can only hear footsteps when the players are landing from jumps. The demo is bugged. I cannot hear any footsteps in the demo to be able to go, oh, he heard them and, and, and Modi would have called as a, as a close app setup. And then against an anti-eco, you're going to spam through the apartments like that. I don't know. Right, I'm not saying one way or another, but I'm saying I can't even verify if he did hear that because I cannot hear the footsteps in the demo. And I would I recommend all of you, if any of you are interested, to go to the link on YouTube. There's the HLTV link provided. Download the demo, whack it in, watch it from Modi's POV, see if you can hear any sounds and hear it, and 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 tell me what you think because I know a lot of you watching out there right now are hardcore Counter Strike fans, and a lot of you would would be at like. The clip that's posted is just showing you Peacemaker's perspective, right? But like that, that's it. It's showing you, pe and we don't know right. what was said. We don't know what, but he was flying well, the thing around is they don't, actively. They don't care is, about that, or at least- No, like I know they, they don't. Really. Yeah. I know they don't, but I think that's half the problem, right? Like, yeah, I agree and, to, to a degree for sure. We had this conversation where we went around the bloody tree chasing our own tail, where then how do we even determine? We, we don't know what was said in TeamSpeak. We have no idea. We will never know. We will, like, we will never know. We will act as- even if the players of all these things sat there and looked us in the face and they said to us, no, we actively didn't do this, or we still, uh, we, we, there would still be doubt. There would still be doubters that would exist to some degree, right? It's just all of this here. And then I don't understand what we do. Okay, so some of them cheated and were more, oh, there's the mic. Some of them cheated and were more malicious than others. So, okay, they should be banned, but now we're backdating it. And then ESIC took a year since the last bunch of submissions came on through to make their decision. So now yeah. these players are being punished. Like we're weighing up. Not only are we laying, weighing up the morality of, of, of if they actively cheated or not, or if we think that it was malicious or not, then we're weighing up how shit the communication and decision-making and everything seems to be around ESIC, right? Like, because it just seems to be, uh, when, are we, when are we getting any positive news? Yeah. Where is the match fixing going on in North America with, with the Valorant players? Next which, week, bro. <laughs> but aren't the, the Valorant players are out there also, actively playing in the best Valorant tournaments. Didn't didn't they have that whole situation with the Australian scene as well, where like half the stuff that they, had they to walk like, convicted back people for, they had yeah. to like walk back? I yeah. think one of the things that you, Sponge, uh, and and Tracker also brought up at the beginning is uh, a big issue for me is that they have become this like de facto standard, and because of them, no one wants to go come out with some of this evidence that they have. Like, could not be like maybe a full investigation, but like a journalist that would want to publish something is. Uh, asked to not publish something because we ESIC are working on this and this could like jeopardize the investigation. So instead of like doing things like we did in the past, just handling shit ourselves and, you know, putting the info out there and the TOs deciding individually and the, and the organizations, the teams as well, deciding who they want to work with or who they don't want to work with. We're waiting for this uh, entity to post their findings, which is taking so fucking long. It's like ridiculously long. It's like if it takes two years, that's like a whole career. You like come out of tier three, peak, become washed, still playing on a top team, and retire in the whole span of those two years that they take to to like actually already four, have four years, the, yeah. already have the evidence and just to, to get to the conclusion. But the actual thing happened even two years before that. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's amazing. I mean, there's a reason why there's there exists a statute of limitations in like the, the 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 normal law system, right? So like I wonder like at what point do we do we introduce something like this in esports where obviously the 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 the, the period of time will probably be shorter because of the you know how long the career is generally and stuff like that. Obviously it shouldn't be 20 years or whatever it is in, in criminal cases in the US or whatever, um wherever else, you know. But like in general, it feels so weird to just like look at one round from four years ago and say, okay, well, you're not going to the next major. Boys, like it's can, it's so fucking weird to me. Can you guys keep going for a second? I need to. I'll be back. I yeah, need to just course. brb like quite literally twenty to thirty seconds. Keep, keep yeah, going. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's all good. Look, I yeah, that's definitely the most confusing thing to me. Like the way that that it the the amount of time that it took because like considering the the investigation ended in in March last year, that's fourteen months essentially, and then somehow we we never heard one name 
the entire but time. It's why this whole release just reads like a bunch of just sanctimonious bullshit, like just self and like the commissioner takes the firm view that esports should hold no room for complacency with such matter. Where's the complacency in getting the results out within the two years? <laughs> like, what what are, what am I reading here? Everything. What? He's had a he's had a gag idea. Put there on your kids' ball hats. Yeah, everybody, there we go. We're about to go fucking deep into this one. I don't know where we're at. I don't know where Look, I left I, you out here. One thing that I will say in in regards to why it might have taken so long and why this why it felt so rushed in the last week or so. Okay, so first of all, why it took so long, right? Like the, when we had Ian here last time, I think he was talking about like the fact that Valve stepped in and came up with their own sort of punishments on top of what these sick already came up with, which is obviously to do with the majors and how much, how many majors uh, these players could have attended or could not have attended. For some of them, it was one. For some of them, it was permanent, right? Like no no majors uh, that they could attend uh, in, in their entire career, right? And based on that, Ian was saying that that they didn't feel right like applying the same sanctions to the new people because they knew suddenly this the punishment was going to be bigger than they yeah. anticipated. And so that's why there was apparently some back and forth between Valve and Isik about this and and apparently that like it took a long time for there to be any sort of a conclusion. I'm not sure if there was any sort of conclusion, but like it even felt rushed after that year for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know why exactly, but it certainly I'm from what I understand, Isik didn't even plan to release these things just this close to the major they even wanted to to let the major pass and solve everything afterwards but because of some of these because of the list being leaked to some people the, there's the, that jackson they actually, thing in the anonymous the jackson flavor. thing there's yeah. obviously the Cerdo came up with a couple of reports knowing some of these names at least that were involved right and apparently this put pressure on isik to to start uh rushing this out because otherwise they would have you know some coaches probably would have been put under the crosshairs by the community because some of these journalists would have come up with some of this information. We obviously had Jackson reveal the Peacemaker clip that, so that already you know brought some questions or raised some questions to Imperial and what was going to happen with him, right? And so that's basically what I understand to be the main reason why it was rushed and why it was released this close to the major. Uh, yeah, but th that just means they were pressured because the journalists were going to tell the story first because they couldn't get their shit together. Yeah, like, I mean, what, that's, that's what absolutely answer could fair, they yeah. possibly give on this, right? Because if it is the cop out of oh, we don't have the resources, I hear that enough from some of my employers, right? I don't need to keep hearing that. Yeah. I, Look, I, if I, you don't, if you don't have the resources, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. Then, exactly, right? like you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be in charge of the entire ecosystem if you can't solve relatively simple matters that you have all the evidence for but, in a. In, in this time, right? Do we want to go down the crazy tinfoil hat go. route here, boys? You Are you ready for go this? For it. Are we ready there for this? Go. Just live in a fantasy world with me here for a second. You said striker and you made a tweet about it and we spoke about it already. I just want to make sure this is as clear as we can get for everybody that there might potentially be a fourth name who, for whatever reason, is considered to be not as severe, right? Okay. When you, when you, when you look at some of these clips of some of these guys, right? And as Jason's saying, you know, it's one round or it's a round and a half or whatever. And there's a whole bunch of names here that aren't on this list, right? So somebody has decided, right, in this specific case of a fourth name that we will not find out until after the major, that it was not as severe for whatever reason that they're deciding that we don't have the evidence of because we don't know the name, right? What if yes. this name, okay, let, let me, let's put it this way. What do the three teams who have lost coaches now have in common? Oh, shit. Oh, no shit. Then, but they're not a partner team in Blast or ESL. Right? <laughs> no, but seriously, hear okay. me out. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. any of this shit, but imagine if the team after that gets their coach banned is a partner team of Blast and ESL or a big profile team. Like I'm talking like a big fucking big sticks, top five team. And somehow the severity of this coach that is going to face some sanction after the major gets away with playing the major where these guys here, they have determined right from what they've seen that these guys should be banned before. But we're dealing with all the same, we're dealing with the same constraints. We're dealing with the same shit. Like it's probably from years ago. It's maybe one round or whatever. Right. So like, what, what, what if that is the case? What if it Julie, is one of the big names? Won't people have their fucking Tim Four hats on and start thinking there's something a little bit dodgy happening here? Yeah. yeah. And as far as I understand it, it is what big name. Here we go. Leak it, striker. Tell us. <laughs> Where's your Tim do Four at? <laughs> Why haven't you thrown your thing on? Look, it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out tomorrow. I'm pretty sure. Anyway. Oh so it my really god! 
leaking the leak. Oh, it's uh, it's it's the second best thing you could look. Have done. I, look, I'm I'm just frustrated with this entire process, right? Because like we've we get this, <laughs> like we finally waste. get. What's right? It's such a waste of everyone's energy. This the, yeah, everything about I mean, this whole situation. That's the thing, right? Like we, you're like when we heard about this first, like whatever, two years ago, right? In September, we were like, wow, boom, fuck it, whatever. What what the fuck just happened, right? And then like over the next two years, you hear, okay, maybe it's not over. It's still not over. Another year goes by, it's still not over. Somehow there's still a bunch of people coming. And now we get told three names out of like fucking 50 or something that's that's coming or or some, some like number like that. Something? I mean, they said like a total total people that were, I don't know if the, this, they said 134 participants combined. And I don't know if this means like, that if let's say offenses? one, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if let's say one coach was involved in like multiple versions of the bug, if this accounted like, for one or for three different offenses, right? Or for three different participants. But anyway, we're expecting tens of coaches to be banned from 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 this, at least from all, all that we've heard from E6 so far. But somehow we only hear the first three and the, the rest is coming before the major anyway, somehow. Or at least a lot of them are coming before the major, apparently. But they're not going to be banned. They're just going to be announced. They're just going to be... And they're like they, gonna come they haven't later, even said or what maybe. the sanctions exactly are, and we have to kind of like... Yeah. I guess infer it from from the the matrix and from whatever the else they said about the links. The difference with some of these is that it's the third person, from what I gather. It's the third person bug yeah, where yeah, you just like you're on one of your team teammates, one of your players from the team, yeah. but you're in third person. Like is that considered the less severe one? The least, yeah, the least yeah. serious one, apart the, the, according to them, which you know kind of makes sense because they kind of have I to mean, move around, you, and then you, you can say you that. can look around corners, you can see like information that the players technically can, but it's relatively. Like it's it's relatively limited what you can see, and it's also because of the the fact that the it was not enforceable, and then you always got out of it at the end of the round. Like it was impossible for it to be triggered for more than one round at a time, right? So that's like kind of like the like the reasoning that Isik used for this not being as serious as the other ones. I want I want I want Zonic to get banned, not because I want him to actually have cheated, but I want something <laughs> to trigger the players to stand up and actually fight for the coaches. Do you know I, something we, that we, we need, don't? Or? We need like we need like a high profile coach to get banned for one round, well, so that all get the it. players step up and just go, "This is fucked up." So that all the players finally just say, "This is so messed up that we're just banning a hundred coaches for a round and a half at a time." Can we all stop the insanity? Like. They get fucking wild over some comms on a fucking broadcast, but nobody, like, when do the players step in and say, look, if you guys keep banning coaches for no reason without any evidence that they're trying to cheat, we're not playing in this fucking event. It's the only way it's going to stop. It'll never happen. This is all no, a pipe dream. Not. I'm hallucinating. <laughs> not but it would be fucking great. It would be It would be fantastic. Like, who's going to step up and actually, actually, uh, I don't know. There's, there's no one with leverage actually speaking out and saying that this is going crazy. Like, we, we've lost the plot. In my mind, I think we're there. I, I think, think we're, we're gonna get there soon enough, though. Like, because like this is gonna involve a lot of people, and I think a lot of like a bunch of people at the top as well, um, outside of this fourth name that that, that that's apparently coming as well. So it's like, it's it's it, I don't know. I don't know what the blowback will be, but I hope there will be some because like obviously there's a lot of fuckery behind this. Like there, there's so many things that Isig have fucked up along the way, and not just in this case, but just in general, like with every single case they've evolved in and it's always been the same excuse that we've heard time and time again around resources and that them not being able to handle it like i'm look i don't want to i don't want to put people in this in a position where i'm going to like make judgment about the entire organization but like the more you hear about this the more you feel like they're doing more damage than good you know and that's just that it's just so fucking frustrating to keep hearing about this and keep hearing that like they should have done things differently but they didn't because of resources because of lack of communication between them involved whatever the fuck the excuse will be right like it's just that it's just annoying as hell it's you know i didn't even i didn't even notice this until just now even even in this like release from isik like they don't even actually this is what's so fucked up about the situation is they're not actually like banning people not actually penalizing people for even cheating it's for not acting in an appropriate manner yeah it's like, it, what, it's because of the potential for for exploitation just, is yeah, what they're I get it. it it's yeah. just like what a fucked up thing to like say to like just like say like uh yeah, I mean, th th I that's, th that's the this. thing, right? Like, especially if you look at these cases where it's just like, let's say it's just one round and let's say it's just like, it, it really is like provably not enforceable, you know, where you just like, you bugged into it, like, like you couldn't do anything about it until you disconnected, right? Like, if you look, if you think about the 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 consequences of that one round, like, okay, do you actually put that up against the major? Like, do you say this one round on, at an yeah. online event four years ago is like worth 
you being ba banned from the next major and for the for the next five months. Like, I'm sorry, but that's that 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 is so un atrociously that, that, overblown. That's the thing right there that you point out, though, and this is the whole thing with the cheating, because there's obviously or 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 the exploitation or the use of the bug or whatever, however you want to frame it, right? But it, everyone's going to look at it differently. Everyone's going to go, okay, yeah, this was a tier five game and it, it, it didn't fucking matter. Or yeah, it happened once for half a round, he disconnected. But this is where the whole ESIC thing comes in. And 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 this is where I feel like, I don't know if I've done a complete 180 since we were talking about this last time around with the whole Hunden situation and everything. But like before it was like, yeah, like you cheated, you fucked up. Now I'm sitting here going, okay, well, you, you, you did this and you... The, the game triggers the bug in a lot of these situations, right? Like it's, it's these players aren't getting themselves into it as far as we're, we're aware. You've been caught in it and now you're being punished for it. But how do we start putting up those rules and restrictions like you're talking about, Striker? Like, because they were in it, like we have evidence, they're in it. Yeah. But the, okay, now what do we do? Because obviously, like it's all of these factors combined that puts us in this awkward situation it puts yep. us in the situation where we're we're talking about the information being with <laughs> ESIC for over a year yeah like with, like the thing is so also much things. Yeah. yeah the thing is also like you can you can argue that they broke a rule right like because like usually the rule books i actually talked to messios and, and michael about this today and i was wondering about what their what their uh stance would be on it because obviously both have been admins and both have like played their part in actually framing some of these rule books right and like Essentially, like the rule books have always said something about bug abuse, right? And and that being a punishable offense to some degree, or just like something that that players obviously shouldn't do. But like that, the, the abuse part is the problem, right? Like we don't know that it was abuse. They we just don't know. We just know that it happened. We don't know whether whether they used it to to to, to any sort of an advantage, right? Like un unless you have some sort of T speak recording or whatever it is yeah. that's going to prove that they said it to a team. Okay, I see this guy here. And and like obviously that's going to be proof, but we don't have that with anybody as far as we know so far. Like we haven't heard that. Obviously, with some cases you can make a pretty good guess, but like you're not going to know. Like even of course with Zoner, like with Zoner, like it's a, it's going to be relatively obvious when he's done it. Whatever fifteenth, I don't know what the actual number is, you know. But a lot of times and clearly like got into it on purpose. That's a, a bit of a different story. But with a lot of these random offenses, right? Like there's. It's it's just crazy, right? That you have to make that uh, make that judgment about these team uh, about these uh, these coaches. So yeah, I, look, I don't even know where I was going with this, but I'm just frustrated. What's what's that conclusion then? Where do we go from there? I don't know. Point? I just feel if yeah, you're going to be the judge, jury, and the executioner of players and their careers and coaches and their careers, be good at the, at least one part of that. Trio. Do it do it properly. Like if 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 like because if and this is this is I want to go back to my initial point. Like this is Counter Strike. This isn't just an esport, right? We don't talk about baseball, right? And th there's a like I. When people in physical sports are doping, right? Like they're probably they they have USADA or whatever the fuck it is that goes out and checks everybody, right? But that's that's because everybody's doping with drugs in their body. We're talking about games with all have different levels of understanding here. Like they're on different engines, right? They're they're different types of games, like. We, we need people, first of all, to be experts in their field when deciding on this shit. And again, I'll say it again in case you're just joining, ESIC in terms of having Ian doing the stuff to do with ma match fixing and, and people throwing matches and that kind of shit and looking at the money being moved around from these betting sites, and, and all, that is in his wheelhouse. But in terms of them being able to adequately know what's going on in a server, they don't. And if the experts that they're going to are high up management at some of these esports companies that run tournaments, I'm going to say they're partners as well. with the teams they also, who employ the players. <laughs> they also don't. They're not experts in that. They're not experts in being in Counter Strike in a, in, in a coach slot. There's probably a couple of ex coaches who are. There's probably a couple of people who played professional Counter Strike and aware of like what you would be looking for for information that you could tell is info. Like that's why I immediately went in that Peacemaker clip to see him flying around. I'm like, okay, they're doing a default. It's an anti eco. They know they're up against either a force by or an eco. A double hole set up on the second round of a game with pistols. Not the most uncommon thing in the world. Did Moddy hear him? Guess what? Demos fucked. Couldn't tell you. Doesn't help me at all. And even if it did, even if I heard it, I still couldn't tell you one way or another if Peacemaker said anything or he didn't. Unless, like, so all of this stuff, it's like, I just think it needs to start, it needs to be done properly. Like, it needs to be done properly. That's, that's as simple as it is for me. It, if it's going to be done, it needs to be done properly. I, I, I just... Yeah. We, these are people's lives, man. And and I'm not saying that cheaters shouldn't be punished because a lot of people will take that out of context. If people have cheated, 
or, or they've shown malicious intent, th then they should be punished. But like in this situation, it just doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me for some reason. And I mean, it, it, it also affects more, you know, on the, the lower level or lower tiers of Counter-Strike as well, because it's not only, only, you know, the majors that follow E6 rules. The If you look at like Tricked or, uh, you know, that tier three, tier two level, people are also affected if they get banned by E6. And if you have people banned for literally being a human, seeing something you don't understand, and then disconnecting after, you know, 25 seconds, and you get banned for a few months for that, you know, that you ruin someone's career at a lower level as well. You're tarnishing yeah. coaches as well, who, what they bring to teams, like they're meant to be that, that figure, right? Who's meant to instill good values. Like, and now you're a coach who gets tarnished with the brush of like, you cheated. Just out, it, of, yeah? just out of curiosity, just out of like sheer numbers and mathematical odds, supposed to be 134 people as having a, identified as using one of the three variants of the coaching yep. bug. I don't know. That just, just seems like a lot of people to be like actively trying to cheat. Maybe I'm just being fucking naive in today's day and age, but. I mean, yeah, I mean obviously, it's... obviously not everybody. Like it's that's like abundantly clear that not right, all but, of these yeah. coaches actually inten intentionally cheated, right? Like that's obvious. No, okay, but, but, say, but they're still on the say, list. I mean, obviously you can't know. Like maybe all of them did. Like I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, let's, I don't yeah, know. Let's, right, uh, let's kind of put a, put a cap on this. But just to put the numbers into perspective, HLTV has like twenty two thousand players in the database, like in total. Okay. One point from one point six, like. From when did it start? 20, 2005, six or something when the player stats started coming in. How many 20... of the coaches that have cheated have been on top 20 teams? You know that? So, about it, so, so like, take into account, like, how many coaches have even existed in Counter Strike that, that played games? Like, okay. the, the, we don't have profiles. For, we have some profiles for some of them. Some of them are listed as players as well. But, like, that is, that would be like, I don't know, 5% of all coaches essentially in CSGO that got affected by some of these things i'm well, so, pulling this number out of my ass but it's not really it's more. not far it's not far away it could be 10 percent. let's not, not forget that's the, reasonable that some kid out of and like fucking like you know some 15 year old kid could be like in the coaching slot for his like high school team in like esa premiere i'm assuming he would count in this article of the headline as like one of 134 coaches like the the, the word coach automatically gives you like a certain level of gravitas and i feel like if it's that many quote-unquote coaches like there's got to be a good chunk of those that are just like here, just to like fucking chill and like play with their, you know, play with their good friends down the road. Yeah, who knows? That yeah. It's like that we're gonna have to see until like we actually see all the like yeah. the entire list of the names because like, I mean, I I don't actually know which demos have been taken because it should be like HLTV's database, but maybe even on some other stuff on top of that, like the premieres, premiere matches and whatever. I'm not so sure because obviously we don't cover like every single thing that exists in the kind of strike landscape, right? But I imagine they might have sort of taken something like Premiere, like the regular season of Premiere that we haven't covered in a while, like on top of that, right? I know even our demos got searched. The Dust yeah, 2. Yeah, I know, I know all of our demos did get, like we sent over all of our dem demos. Oh, I mean I Dust that, 2. But I don't know if... Dust 2. Oh, it's in Dust 2 demos. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, like, and this is the thing. I think the, the concept was to just try and get everybody out in one foul swoop, right? But it yeah. didn't happen because yeah, it took, didn't a, happen. took over a year. But the, like that, the, being but available. that is the weirdest part about it because like I like to a degree I can understand that like figuring out what to do with like new variants of the bug that maybe you only figured out were happening like in the next year or whatever. But like they're literally solving these static bug cases with the exact same matrix that they used two years ago. Like there's no difference about these cases whatsoever, like in the way that they're being handled. Yeah. Except for the fact that they're being handled two years apart, even though they've been known for almost the same amount of time, right? So that, that, that is the weirdest say, fucking part. I would part. say unlucky. Let's talk about Let, the major. Maybe. Yeah, let's let's move on to the major. Let's just put it that if, if Strike is right and there's more news coming soon, then uh, I guess we'll have more to add on this look, in the future. Uh, like my, the, what, what, from what I understand, the, 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 like the actual list should be coming before the major. I could be wrong. Maybe ASIC is, is going to change their mind about that. Who the fuck knows at this point? Like, if, like I've heard over the past week, I've heard changes in the, like in the planned release of all these things, like four or five different times, like the 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 schedule has changed several times already. So I I don't want to promise anything, but I heard from what I understand, it was supposed to come before the major, even with other names. 
Okay, well, not hate or TV confirmed, but you no. might find out soon. All right, uh, let's run some ads and then we'll get into the major talk. The Extra Fire M42 RGB, what a fun mouse with five colorways, lightweight frame and just 59 grams with a swappable backplate to suit your grip style, the sensor, the easy core, the smooth skates and driverless control for RGB and DPI is why you should check out the M42 RGB down below. Buy and sell your skins now. Easy, fast and safe. The best skin site. Credit card deposits and withdrawals. Instant cash out methods. Get the best deals. Quick, simple, reliable. Bitskins.com. All right, we're back from the break, and we're going to get into the major talk. We're going to be kicking off the 17th Counter-Strike Go Major on Monday. Uh, all the action will be happening with the Challenger stage, moving to Legends, and then, obviously, the Champions slash Playoff stage that will be going on down uh, with the eight-team single elimination bracket. I'm going to be putting a link in the chat right now. If you're interested in going to the Major, I believe there's still tickets available. You can get all the information on that link that I've just spammed in towards the chat. If you are interested in going, it's in Antwerp in Belgium. Pretty central, pretty easy to get to. Uh, on the train. Um, so yeah, if you want to come on down, come come watch some Counter-Strike. Uh, in terms of the key information right now, we can bring up the teams in the Challenger stage. Lucas, I just will send you a link here. Just fly this one up and I'll, I'll quickly go over them all. Uh, and, and then we'll do the same for the next stage. And then we're pretty much just going to get into uh, a conversation almost straight away with this tier maker thing. Yeah. Um, so we won't we won't need to, to sit around on the details for too long. So the teams taking place in the challenger stage are Ents, G2, Australis, Outsiders, Vitality, Liquid, Complexity, MIBR, Spirit, Fours, Bad News, Eagles, Eternal Fire, 9Z, Imperial, Renegades, and IHC. Those 16 teams will be competing in the same format as what was just played over there in most of the RMRs other than the Asia, which was 16 team Swiss format, best of ones as the establishing games and best of threes as the elimination slash progression games. The eight teams who qualify from there will be going to meet the likes of Heroic, Big, Phase, Na'Vi, Cloud9, Copenhagen Flames, NIP, and Furia, who are already waiting in the wings in that legend stage. Okay, there we go. We've capped off all the main stuff. We've got all the big names, we've got all the teams, we've got everything we want to see. We got the fucking pick'ems out. It's all happening. Now, what we want to do here tonight is a bit, a bit of a tier list. And I saw that got posted on social, not on social media, it got posted on the HLTV forums, um, this little tier maker here. And I think we just kick things off here, boys, because we're going to have a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this tier maker can kind of help us put things into better holes. And uh, then we can get into the challenger pick and, and get that done here with how we think it's all going to unfold for that challenger stage. Now, before we we kick this off, right, I can't actually read from where I'm sitting what we have on on, on the left-hand side here, Lucas. Okay. Can, or can you read it out to me, Prof, what we have in, in, as the buckets? It's uh, major winner, top four, playoffs, legends at best, or you can just say legends, so like top 16. Okay. Uh, meh, and getting destroyed. I think that's the... That's the last one. Okay. Well, here's the thing, right? I was like working. I was, I was like writing something up to do like a chain of tweets on my thoughts. And then I realized no one gives a fuck about my thoughts. And the people who do come here and listen to me waffle on for the better part of two and a half hours. So I'm just <laughs> not going to make a tweet and have all the death threats come my way. So I avoided doing the tweet, but I still wrote it down. And it was basically doing the same thing. It was just kind of creating categories here. So the ones that yep. I had written down were like championship caliber, which would be the major winner one, right? Which yeah. I think it's maybe... Maybe top four even. Yeah, this one this one here, we don't really have... It's not as clear cut of, of a list of teams as we would normally have, right? Then I had uh, teams who were primed, like teams who who were ready to take that next step to be in like a grand final of a major or like challenge deep into the semis or whatever. Then I had like some X Factor teams, for example, Outsiders would have been one of those, right? With that that dead team smell about them. Then there's like a bunch of teams, like I guess you could say like your how you had it as legends. I called it as a puncher's chance. And then I just had teams who were making up the numbers. So yeah. like I there's a lot of ways that we we can define these, but we'll try and we'll try and do this. But I think that there's a bit more context required for a lot of this, right? Because yep. these these categories, sure, but we, we're gonna have a, a bit we'll more context with it. some we'll of the names. Exactly. It, yeah. So let's start with the top one, right? And I don't think we just have to put one team into the major winner because we're going to be going through the pickems every week, hopefully, as it is, so we can follow that along as we we go. So let's just talk about teams that we think have that potential 
that we see as potential winners here? Because I think for most of us, Jason, I'll throw it to you first. There's probably two names in it on the top yeah. of everybody's head. I think even the second one might be a little bit generous, all things considering. But Faze and Navi are the two that I would that I have in my head as being up there. And Navi haven't exactly looked like it. And I think we're all kind of giving him a little bit of a pass, a little break because of the circumstances uh, going on around the world. But um, yeah, I think you have to think coming into a major that there's going to be some kind of like a resurgent performance to some degree out of that Navi squad to put him up there in my mind, at least. Is there any but, disagreement with this, boys? No, not exactly. I mean, you can you can make some sort of an argument for Cloud9, but obviously they haven't won anything on land, or at least not big. Wait, that, wait, wait, so... wait, wait, wait. Make an argument for Cloud9, go. Oh. Wow, okay. I mean, they are, outside of phase, I think they are the most stable team at the moment. That's 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 my my entire argument. I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, like, like, nobody else. The thing is, if you look at everybody else, for everybody else, you have some sort of a some sort of a butt, right? Like, of course, for Cloud Nine, you have the butt that they haven't actually won online. Nothing yeah. like a big big as this. But obviously, they are a stable team. Like we've we've seen the quality of them for an like over an extended period of time, right? They just haven't really peaked yet. Like so I think that's the that's the best word to use. Uh, but like from everybody else, I can yeah. see how okay G two like. So, you know, people could could say G2, but obviously, like, they've had some really fucking disappointing runs in the past couple of events. And then, whatever, Vitality, Heroic, some of these teams, some of these other teams, right? Like, everybody has something that you probably say against them. Like, Cloud9, the only thing is that they haven't peaked uh, consistently at an event yet. But, uh, but in terms of uh, their placing, they've been just very solid from event to event for a really long time. I, I think that I think that's the the key here with this conversation, right? And and this is why I had the this top tier category as like championship caliber because if you look at Navi and you look at Phase, the the full package is right in terms of the individuals in the team, either being a lot of firepower or making sense within their roles, have been winning in recent times, and obviously not so much for Navi, but as Jason said, we're, we're giving them a, a bit of a pass with how fucked the the whole invasion situation's been, and then the fact that they do have Russians and Ukrainians within that same team, it's been very tumultuous, right? We've seen this whole Boomish getting a divorce and then Boomish being back together. And we, we've seen all this shit, right? And and I'm sure that there's a lot more of it going on behind the scenes uh, that we're not completely privy to. So, But this team is the previous major champions. I don't think anybody thinks that they've completely fallen off a cliff. It's just been there's been distractions. But they're complete teams in terms of their approaches to the game. Like they 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 both have very good, they both have pretty good map pools, right? Like th this is why these teams would fall into the championship caliber position. Because right now, I don't think we're going in like we did during the Astralis dominant era where it was Astralis are going to win the major, right? Like you could say Navi are going to win the major and... I think it has to be phase. If you're talking about a favorite, like a clear favorite, you have to pick one team, it has to be phase. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 if you say anything right. else, uh, you're just like not following what's happening for the last four months, essentially. Yeah, but I don't think it's as... Um, clear like, not as yeah, clear cut. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it, no, they're, not, they're not that far not. behind, yeah. right? Um, I was I thinking... Think, I, I think what what could be also interesting is just like go um, along the teams that we have on the bottom. So we start heroic, vitality, spirit, and just like mo send them up into the into the bracket like that. Just okay. to get out there. We'll bring Cloud Nine back down here because uh, I, I don't yeah, think we can put them into top. Yeah, whatever. Or That's a playoff four, team. That's a playoff team. One hundred percent playoff team. Yeah, maybe we can consider yeah. top four. I am putting them in my top four. You're Are not you... putting them in your top four. Uh, you think they're going to okay. shit the bed, Jason? What are you saying, Matt? Yeah, I think uh, I think we should, I I don't necessarily know if they'll shit the bed. I think if they don't, um, I don't know, man. They just I, I just have them as a I don't I don't I would rather see other teams in the top four. I don't think they're anything special once you get to the big games. I think we know what we have out of them now. I think it's one of the things that's kind of. Uh, not boring, but remember like last year out of the pandemic and as the lands came back, like it was like it was fun having that story of being like, let's see what we got. This team dominated online. Let's see what let's see what they're gonna come with. And that was kind of the story around this team. Well, we know now, like we we know now they are much okay. the same team, except for the fact that I, I think they miss some like X factor, I think, out of Exile and Shiro, who don't seem as and this is purely eye test. I don't even know if you could find stats to back this up. You might be able to. But those two just don't seem to have the same kind of killer instinct that they do online or like the willingness to like be assertive and, and go for that like final kill. So they're still very good and they can still obviously make top four. Um, I just, you know, I, I it, it the, just, I kind of feel like this team has been decided in my brain. Don't, don't um, you also, but I, I feel like that's kind of unfair though. Like if we're talking about their arena performances, they played three arena matches in their whole fucking life. 
So it, I, don't don't we have to give them time, like more experience in that venue for them? No, because they played break plenty through. of non-arena lands. Like I don't, I don't. But, like, you think their you know, land performance is bad? I don't think that, it's bad. A, I, don't, not, I don't. I don't. I don't think not it's true. bad. It's not. It's not. It's not like a. It's not the same as it. Just they don't. It just wasn't the same as it was online when they were winning events for seven months. And I'm not trying to say it's bad. I'm not trying to say they're onliners. I just think we know what we're going to get out of them on land, and I don't think they have been able to build the same attitude and same like fever pitch in their gameplay that allows them to win the big games. And I think especially at a major, they've played three arena games. How'd they do? Well, they won one, which is against Furia, which was they got okay. discarded the other. Destroyed, yeah. destroyed by Navi and destroyed and by is, FaZe this, as well. And this is an arena event, right? Yeah. yeah. That that was Katowice, right? The one against FaZe. And but like they they lost to Kato, the winners of Katowice yeah. phase, and they lost mm -hmm. the winners of the major. The major, not. yeah, yeah. So but it's not even, like they lost you know, to even, some shitter teams. Right, right, right. And even Katowice, I think you could maybe give them a pass because we we do the same thing, obviously, for for but, not yeah, with yeah. that right. situation. Them as outsiders. Um, but you know, I I just know when I've watched them on the ITS on land and both you know in studio and arena games on land, I just think like it's 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 a frightening prospect to think that they go to land. And I've been in a similar situation when I was competing, where your star players who you're used to dropping like 25, 30 kills in a game, like all of a sudden both of them are missing like seven, five, five to seven like key frags they normally get, and then all of a sudden you're trying to make up for those five kills. And I think that's that's where it falls flat for me for them. Is right. like I still think they're a good team. It's that last 10 percent to break into that top four i think it's like very much a coin flip for them at the moment but, but this like do you uh, but can you come up with four teams that they would lo lose to in that quarterfinal then uh i just went through and did my own little thing on the side that you guys have okay. up there uh i had phase navi and my major winner my top four if we want to skip ahead right. uh i threw heroic and answer both in there uh, although I think heroic and and heroic and, and gamut and cloud nine slash gambit are essentially the same the same place. I just put heroic there, okay. Um, okay. and then I have, I have Furia there as well. But th this is the thing, right? So like the, this this conversation, and I agree with Jason in the sense that I think they lack playmakers in the big games. We also haven't had them necessarily in enough of those big games to see them do that. But it's part of their play style that made them so good was the fundamental base they had doing Counter Strike by the book. Right, that's one of the things that you would attest as a positive to the Cloud9 slash Gambit roster of old is they had a really good fundamental base. The individual who was making space a lot of the times with Nafni with these hyper aggressive maneuvers, uh, Shiro would always be able to hit that steady orb show he'd need as a as a turret. You'd have Axel hitting the shots, and then Inters would do his supportive role, and then Hobbit was the one who you would look towards to make more of the bigger moves or bigger plays when the chips were down and the team needed him. I think that you do need a bit more of that pizzazz and that flair out of Axel and Shiro. Now, whether or not that comes or not is something that we're only going to learn with time, right? Like the, that that's that's for me is is what would take this roster to the next level is when those individuals can make those players yeah. and be more comfortable in, in that arena of Counter-Strike. And I think that it can happen. And that's why like I had the category as like primed instead of top four uh, or because this is like, I think it's so hard at this to cement these teams into the different slots of where they're truly going to place, yeah. even in head to heads, right? Like I look at heroic and cloud nine as both teams who are primed for different reasons, right? One has a really like more uh, explosive style of counter strike that's fast and individual driven and like very like lurky, but also in your face at the same time. And they have a very good understanding of how they like to do that. Then you have the fundamental strong base of cloud nine on the other side. Both these teams have been chugging along throughout the online era, getting different wins at different tournaments, but both, relatively on an upward trajectory, right? There's obviously been a bit more blips as far as heroics going, but now it's about converting when we've seen them at their absolute peak, like Jason's talking about with Cloud9, like we've all seen heroic in certain situations when Cadian's getting fired up online and they're winning these crazy bonkers clutches, now manifest itself, right? They have all the opportunities, like all of the, everything in the lead up is like for this moment now, like can they seize this? Because what more can these teams have, right? Are we talking roster changes for these teams? Is that what's necessary for them to take the next step? Or are they now at a point where we've seen enough of them, they have enough experience now that they're primed and ready to show if they have enough to take it to that next level or if there has to be changes in coaching or players? That's where I'm at with these two yeah. teams. I agree. Right. Like the way you kind of framed it is more the where the teams are, what the expectations are versus what the results are. Like this tier is like more on result-based kind of guessing what's going to happen. Uh, but I agree with the assessment of Heroic and Cloud9 as like they, this is their time to shine. Like they, they're in similar to, spots. Yeah, yeah, they need to prove something or, yeah, or or make a change. Essentially, if they want to win trophies, right? Yeah. Like that, that's um, the thing. I I do like also. I do, do want to say that 
at the at the end of the day, if Cloud9 is going to be making quarters slash semis at every event, I don't think that's a bad thing for this team and where they are. Like Nafani is like 20 years old. Like all of these guys are super young. We don't really need to put them at the same expectations as, you know, a Navi or a FaZe or whatever mm -hmm. that they have to win every tournament. I but think that window kind of... will close soon. Well, but they will have to make changes. I, mean, I know what you're saying about Axel like... and Shira have a lot more, but the team as a whole would probably naturally go through some changes at some point soon anyway, if they don't, yeah. they, they want to win the trophy, right? Yeah, but yeah, but, but then, I think this could be like a like they remind me of like the old the TSM of old, right? Like before they started winning trophies, right? Like they the they, they always had they always had like that. They actually had a very similar even feel to them. Like, but not necessarily while Kerrigan was with them because they were a lot more volatile at that time. But just before they started, uh, they they started winning kind of more con more consistently. They didn't really have like the the most. Uh, like flashy pieces and they were struggling to have like this X factor player. And then over time, you know, they got to that position where they had Zipex, you know, this clutch God and they had a, a, a device obviously stepping up with the op when he started doing it a bit more consistently and stuff like that. And, and like at that point they were starting to get more consistent, uh, top finishes, you know, like at least contending for titles. And this feels like this cloud nine roster is kind of in the same spot, just less experienced than, than that team was at the time, you know, that it took, TSM maybe two years before they started winning consistently, you know, or like a year and a half while when we were seeing them at the top. And this is kind of like the similar spot Cloud9 is in. Yeah, but that, and that's the thing, right? That that whole conversation is one that only Future is going to be able to tell us how it worked out, right? Well, let's talk about this next team on the list. Vitality. Because this is a fucking... What do we make out of these guys? Um, getting destroyed is completely a reasonable expectation. Like, that could be how they end up... Um, I do think, though, that they showed enough to probably get to Legends. I think that's what I'm going to give him. I'm not going to give him more, much more than that. This is this is a team, right? Like, if everything clicks, they could go super deep. They could, they could win yeah. the Major. Yeah, they could, exactly. They could, yeah. There's a lot of teams that fall into that position, though, right? Like, the, and, and like essentially, the, if it's not phase, it could be, like, anyway. five different teams, yeah. or maybe more, even. It's crazy how many different possibilities there could be yeah. here, right? But being realistic with what we've seen from Vitality so far, you'd put them down at Legends at best, right? Or you, or playoffs, right? Yeah. Like that, that would. Some are on the brink, yeah. I would but put them there. the the honest conversation about the team is like if it all clicks, which it it could, it they could they could play like a second round match against Astralis, and that just ignites the fire of Magic and Dupree, and they just go fucking nuclear. And they just start owning, and Zaiwu's there, and Masuda's actually being able to keep up with the boys, right? That's the, the, the this team could be good. Like, there's no doubt about that. But from what we've seen so far, I don't know if we could put them any higher than um, Legends at best. Is there any any disagreement with that? I threw them in my playoffs, just on my like right off the top of my head, but I'm not going to fight too hard to put them there to be quite honest with you i'm fine with legends at best i have them like you know every major there's like those top eight teams that usually like are the easy default ones because of like the name and the brand and everything like that that you kind of have as your top eight um there's always like two of those teams i feel that don't make playoffs that just get upset and i think yeah. vitality is in a good position to be one of those two teams that gets upset i'm super curious but i think the disparity of this team is like in terms of what they could do is is crazy like if you imagine just Zaiwu coming in and popping off and having one of his like you know throwback events where he's just dominant and then i think that's gonna unlock everyone else so i don't know i i feel like i haven't actually seen this team play in, in quite some time i don't think i I think I've gone back and watched most of their RMR games, so I like actually haven't even like seen them since like Pro League or some shit. Like it's it's been a minute. Yeah, and that was even even like a big stretch yeah. for them, right? Because they they didn't even make it out of the group stage there. So yeah, this is a, a bit more of an anomaly, but there's the potential with this team for them to yep. go deep, right? Like I think that has to be acknowledged. But from what we've seen, we still need to be that to be proven. Okay, yeah. Spirit, um, are definitely a filler team to a degree, right? But they're making up the like, numbers. Yeah. Like they, I watched them get destroyed by sinners on new. I think I think they're in the getting destroyed category. Honestly, uh, I haven't been meh. You haven't been meh. Like yeah, them getting destroyed I mean, depends for me. On how many, the same. Depends on how many how many yeah. teams we kind of like won in those categories. But yeah, we yeah, can put them in the bottom too. Yeah, I'm trying to leave like the keep like the teams that are going to get destroyed. I'm trying to put teams that I'm like really confident are going to get destroyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meh yeah. is more like a, here we really go. Don't... What about what about the next one? Is the next one in that category? Renegades, Renegades, yeah, they're getting destroyed. Okay, okay. I'm not even gonna argue with it. I don't like. I I, I can't argue with it. 
Yeah. yeah. It just I don't well, I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy saying it, you know? Like I I want to I want Renegades to do. I want there to be like a good Australian team. I just, you know. Yeah, what can you put, do? Yeah, I oh, yeah. look. They they could play decent. They could also play shit. Like who knows? Like the that that's the that's the thing with this. I'm going to be honest, this challenger stage looks like real weak. I'm I'm struggling to pick the the six to get through yeah and now yeah. i'm struggling to find that number when i'm doing my pickems really? and like a lot of people like i'm gonna because i put 9z last i wanted to put imperial I last but i figured that, yeah. i would avoid i would avoid getting a lot of negative press but i actually don't think the parallel will go we're all are going to go zero three yeah and, and look i but th this is we'll this get is, to that we'll get to that after yeah. the tier, tier list we're where i'm at the pick em. yeah you're right Let, i'll fucking save it okay outsiders this is a team right here that uh, has that same x factor potential right yeah. This is the team that has the same potential as like Vitality, and they have the dead team smell. Like honestly, yeah, I don't think they can make playoffs. I don't put in Legends at best. Legends, yeah, yeah Legends, just like classic. I think they, yeah, they deserve to be above like the 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 man getting destroyed. But like, I I wouldn't put them for anything better. They could, very they very point. easily could make the playoffs though. I mean, like, yeah, let's be I realistic. mean th that's the thing. Like just... they they have the pieces, right? Like if, if if they're able to put this situation behind them, where like whatever we're just here to play and and we can have fun, whatever. It's not going to be like there's not going to be any actual anim animosity between Ekinder or the rest of the team or whatever it might be. You know, at that at this point, I feel like if they can get past that and actually you know treat this as a major appearance, I think they're going to be okay. But like it could go anywhere. It could go anywhere from them going out in the first stage to the playoffs it, it, it in my mind it depends on which way they use the news of the team potentially no longer being together after the event right they either like all collectively acknowledge it and they go okay well it's still the major and we can still win like yeah. i think that they truly can go really deep in the event like they're a good team or they're like, okay, well, this is it. Like, whatever, fuck it, who cares? Like, after this, the future is uncertain anyway. We'll have to change. Like, I mean, they I, look like they're like I'm. I, I was told that they're they're just not practicing. So that's. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we know which, uh, outside, outsiders. Okay. Yeah. Well, you hate to see that. You don't love to see that. No, not at all. <laughs> okay. Well, next, uh, so let's that's, just put them in that's, legend yeah, the best. We can, next, we can do legends the best too. Yeah. yeah legend the best. man. Now these guys are a team that um, uh, we've they always just been stick talking around, about them. man. They, yeah, they, they are. They have they a high floor. We keep saying that they have a high floor, That's but good. do we think that there's enough of this team for them to go deep within the event? Uh, Hampus keeps proving everybody. Well, I don't even know if he keeps proving it wrong. I don't think people are saying a whole lot. It's like NIP just keep performing well. So things like if you look at their if you look at their history, like they they basically always make the top eight. Like it's 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 pretty rare for them to get to bomb out of events. Obviously, this is a slightly different situation. They've just made changes. But like how many times have we seen an IP in this situation just make the best out of it, essentially? Like it's almost it's almost like I'd put them top eight just based on the fact that they somehow fucking always do it. I, even if I didn't understand why. I don't believe it's going to happen again. I have to think the magic's okay. gone. It's ended. I, I'm with you Ooh. every step of the way, but I'm just going to predict that it's, not this time, not at yeah. the major. For me, for me, it's it's hard. You have Phase, Navi, Cloud9, Heroic. Then you have Ents, G2, probably making Furia. playoffs, right? Furia. So you have like one spot left. Is NIP going to snatch that? I like I'd rather put Astralis there out of the team that you that really? we haven't talked about. Yeah. What the fuck? The recent form has been <laughs> not that great. Let's put them in Legends at best, and then let's at the end we're going to decide, you know, who's going to be that seventh, eighth playoff team. Um, okay. Liquid. Think, uh, I think Liquid would be Legends at best. I think they have, I think they have a chance to get to reach playoffs. I think playoffs is also they're also a team that I can see reaching playoffs. Uh, in that like NIP Astralis, or just Pro Liquid's. Uh, Liquid's gonna get that two-two game for a playoff spot. That's it's, for a playoff it's gonna be, spot. It's gonna be two-two okay. for a playoff spot out of that Legends stage. Okay. Who are they playing first again? Oh, uh, G two. Uh, oh, yeah, oh shit. So oh, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that when we get to the challenge yeah, to the big just, because yeah. I, I actually think that the way that the, we have the harder matches first is actually good. Um, okay, so put it, put them at Legends. Yeah. Put them there and then put Imperial. Uh, match the color of their logo to the color of the category. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, IHC, do we think they're getting destroyed getting or destroyed. are they mad? Unfortunately, they're going to get destroyed as well. Like, they looked good, but when they play actually good teams, they're going to be 
Let's yeah, make another category not, for IHC it. levels of destroyed. And, and not <laughs> know, safe. Renegades. They made renegades look like noobs. Not yeah, safe for work. It's gonna be. It's gonna be awful. And unless they, but they're not gonna play renegades in the, like the O2 game. They're gonna play a good team, so they're gonna get destroyed as well. Mm. That's how I see it. All right. Uh, G2. I mean, I would say playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. See, what are we doing? Like, how are we doing this with G2? Was anybody impressed with their RMR performance? No, but like you kind of have to put them there. Why do you have to? Just based on the pieces. Like we know that they are, they can get there. Like we saw it in Karavica, like the, the levels that they can reach. And you have to feel like the major is where they're going to have to replicate some of that, right? So I, I feel like you just have to put them in top eight. Like, especially given that like you just don't have eight teams that are convincingly better than them. Also, okay. I think I think right. the more this, I would rather this team be struggling through pro league and struggling through yeah. the RMR and looking ugly there, and start putting it together in time for the major. I actually, this is one of those teams where I don't actually care about their recent performances. I don't even really care about the second place at Katowice, just because of the team, because of the names. I'm gonna just give them like a certain level of faith, um, and then just see what the major brings us. But I'm not getting swayed by like some some shaky perform, like a 16-10. A win's a win. You qualified for the major. I don't care if it's 16-10 over Sangle. I don't care if you didn't blow up Bad News Eagles. Whatever. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm not, not even impressed with their map pool. So what are, what are you saying? What give me your opinion, is. chat. Go out of the host into the analyst role and give me your opinion on G2, why they're not going to make playoffs. I, 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 for me, it's their map pool, man. I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> they do like their yellow maps. I don't know it was deep they, enough, man. They like their face at bugs. Their Inferno Mirage does too. They're playing that's into it. everybody else's hands with that type of shit. Like that's the problem I have is like a team of this of this caliber with the individuals that they have. Like I liked how Astralis have just like decided, yeah, we're going to be the best team we possibly can on Ancient, right? They like they want to get. I don't know. I just uh, look. You know, I'll, I, I'll put them in playoffs. Team, I'm fine with it. This team I'm, doesn't I'm feel like they. It. This team doesn't feel like they have an attitude, Chad. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. Like they like the names all look good. The like the 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 brand value all looks good. Like the, the skill is obviously great. But I don't know like what to like. I don't know what comes to mind when I think of them like as as a as a team. Kind of sounds like you were saying Alexi B is a fraud. I don't know if that's what you said. <laughs> I, I just I just lagged out for a second. So yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I don't weird. know. I don't know. I just I don't like it when I see like the the Nico emergency double up on Mirage, and I don't like it when I see, you know like. <laughs> There's just some things I see and I'm like, I don't, I, why? Like the, Did and, you actually and, pull that out of the, out of the episode or not? Yeah. No, G, he just put G203 that we had at appearance. It actually is from that. It's okay, whatever. Oh, I see what he's doing there. No, I, I look, I don't know. I think it's just because in my mind, this team should be at the top with FaZe and Na'Vi. But I can't like I don't know. I think that's why. Like in no. terms of playoffs, like, it's yeah, almost playoffs. like yeah. when when Moses said the thing about attitude, I almost feel like they they are lacking ego at the moment. Like Nico's obviously been lo losing a lot of a uh, lot of confidence lately because his performances haven't been necessarily up to par with what we were used to from him. Uh, especially like if you look at like the level he was at at the end of the year, and like with the with the lack of consistency that we've seen from him this year so far. And then like who else? Okay, Hunter Hunter actually is the is the one that I kind of do believe in. Because he is the guy now that I feel like I see the most kind of like going for plays when he sees the team is in the shitter, right? Like he just, he will just go out and try to push something just because he's, he knows he needs to make a play. And he's kind of like the, the only guy that I see that, see doing that consistently and actually succeed in it. So like he's, he's the only piece of the roster that I, at the moment I have complete faith in. And the rest is kind of like, I'm not, I don't know what kind of form they're going to turn up in. Like Monase has been, has been fine, but he's just not been. Like I was talking about this last time. He just hasn't been hitting the consistent shots that he needs to be as if he wants to be like a really top tier opera. Like he he can hit flashy shots. He can be very uh, uh, reactive at times. Like he moves around a lot. But like when he needs to hit that one shot that's gonna just gonna stop a push, like he misses it. And you know, it just allows the team to go in. But that's and the thing. Just, so it's just it's just so hard to watch this team not really deliver on the potential so far. It is G2's like scouting and signing players and like people signing players in general. Like Monacy isn't that player. He's not that opera. Like he's not that kind of an opera that's going to be super consistent. And that was right. that was kind of obvious when you looked at him. So why why are we doing 
Why are we doing yeah. this? Why are we expecting him to be someone he's I not? Mean, but there's it's, but, it's like signing Grimm and like putting him in all the support roles. It's like But these are these are like types of things that you look at, you know, uppers and at the top and you just know that they have to hit these like at, at least have to hit these basic ones, you know. Yeah, I mean he time, definitely he can be better slash more consistent in those, but he is he has different strengths than, yeah, than that. So it is what it is. I I I don't know. I agree with Moses's uh, like li- lack of character. I don't know if that's the word, but essentially they don't win the games when they like shouldn't. Essentially, like it's always with them. Kind of if sh- shit goes wrong, it's rare that they kind of recover from these situations. And if they do, it's it feels like it's just based off of, you know Nico doing Nico things and not like oh yeah we figured out a way now we're recovering. Look at this tactical adaptation. Look at all the team rallying together. It's just double opping a site mirage which doesn't look good but sometimes it works out it's like that that kind of things i don't really see that from a major winning team but i still think they have enough to, to make playoffs because uh, nico yeah. is just good enough to win you shit a lot of shit ton of rounds on on his own yeah and i i i agree kind of with the sentiment i suppose from jason the sense that like yeah pro league whatever they scraped through the rmr that's all they had to do like i guess this is all that matters but it's i maybe that it have, we haven't seen enough yet like there hasn't been enough convincing done yet right like that could be uh, another another one of those questions we were talking about another team with that before i think i guess it was the same with what we were talking about in terms of the players making the plays from like cloud nine on the stage and stuff obviously different different situation but uh yeah i think i think g2 is another one of those teams at least in my head i, I kind of have to like catch myself and and, and remind myself that I, I think part of the reason why I'd never get like super excited about G2 is because they're one of those teams that you just naturally have high expectations of because of what we saw at Katowice because of the names of the players. And when you see them have like some kind of a weak or disappointing performance, it it feels way worse than it is because you, like you, you're thinking in your head that this team should be contending for every single ch- title and they should be like pretty much put together. So I, at least at least for me, I have to catch myself being like overly harsh on this team. Um, although, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's just... You're pretty nice to yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, they got some players I enjoy watching. Obviously, uh, yeah. that yeah, Yanko, Yanko is mad in chat. He called us all high. And hey, uh, Yanko is in chat. What's up, brother? Yeah, I th- I, look, I think we're all good. Like Yanko, Yanko's doing high. the whole su- supporting Nico thing, you know. So we we let him off with that one. It's all good. Like we can we can talk about the, the type of counter strike. I feel like yeah, I think playoffs for for G two is realistic. I could see them. Obviously, they can do better, but yeah. It's it's what I it think is. playoffs is fair. Like I um, think we we need some some more. Convincing. If, we can come if, back. We can if, we can mull it over. We can always slide up one if later G2 on. If G2 play like a heroic or a cloud nine in the quarterfinals, that is where you could you could see them go through. Uh, I think over these teams, and then if they play a phase or a Navi, probably not. Right, depends. Or a vitality. Would they beat vitality? If vitality make playoffs, means they're kind of okay at that point. Uh, so would they beat them? I don't know. Like yeah, clip a lot of these matchups you're talking about. I feel like that's with a lot of the games, like in all of the stages as well, because like the disparity in a lot of these. Look, the thing is, like once once G two do reach the playoffs, like anything could happen at that point. I feel like, but like, it, I'm a little bit worried about them not even getting there. Yeah, I I think I think considering the fields, right? That if it look, you could frame it the other way. If they don't make playoffs, it's a fucking calamity, right? You could wait, even wait, put wait. it that way. So you're worried that they're not going to make playoffs at all. Look, it depends on it depends on who they meet along the way. I think a lot. I don't know. I actually didn't go through the matchups or whatever how it can yeah. how it can turn out. But obviously, they have a hard matchup first up, you know. And like if they lose that one, they're gonna be down zero one. And that, there's that, no way they like, get eliminated at Challenger stage, surely, man. No, probably not. Surely, I would, I would imagine man. not. Like, I, I, like Legend stage, we're gonna start to get into some swirly business, and that's where it, it might be a bit more. Of a, we, let's, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's let's, 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 let's go put them in force. playoffs, and we'll okay. we'll go let's to go force. Force. Yeah. Meh. I agree with that. Yeah, my. that's that's probably where I put them. Who yeah. is on fours? <laughs> uh, Norby, okay, Zorty, Jerry, uh, yeah. Kenzie, and who's Shalfi. the other It's all yeah, on me. Shalfi it's all good. on me. Shalfi. Shalfi was right. good. Yeah, he was. It was good. Um, these guys, they have some talented individuals. I think. I think it might just be too early before we get crazy excited about this team. Um, so I, I liked some of the players that we got to see, but, uh, yeah, I just think we, we move on from fours. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody 
because we're going to talk about him in the challenges then. Yeah, frankly, I haven't seen enough games from them to to even like. I, yeah, I saw Shafi tear up like a couple of games, but that's pretty much like the only thing that I focused on in that. So I feel it was, like, like weird. I feel like one of fours or Spirit is going to have like some some like ridiculous. Oh, like you're little, still on that Vegas like squadron. Vegas squadron type thing. There's yeah. always, I feel like there's always one team out of that region that just like you don't even expect anything out of them, and they just like they just shit on everyone. It's 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 going to be fun to watch. It's going to be one of them. I don't know which one yet. It's going to be okay. one. All right, one. All right, fair enough. Um, big. Where do we think Big are going, guys? Obviously, this Crimbo edition um has done Gobby. wonders for them. Having Gobby back there in the coaching chair, we have to wait and see how that one plays on out. But like, I, I would say Brink. I would say somewhere on the Brink. I would like on the brink of playoffs and legends like almost they are, i think they will be in a position to to fight for a playoff spot i think they're already in legends right so yeah. that's the minimum that's also fair they could get destroyed in legends but i don't think so i think they looked okay i think they overperformed in going 3-0 um the phase game was kind of everything clicking for them so i don't think that's kind of a realistic um assessment of them being you know a 3-0 team uh being this amazing team that's going to contend for the title or anything like that i think playoffs is the best case scenario but probably probably i have prob- i have a- actually yeah, i if, if i'm picking a dark horse i'll say big for to make playoffs okay okay I have them in legends at best, but that's mostly I hate predicting big. They've they've ruined my 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 life so life. many times. <laughs> yeah. Every time every time I get pumped up to see them, every time I start thinking that they're gonna go on like some little streak, I, I you know, they just they go the other direction. I'm gonna put them at legends at best, but they're right on that cusp, I think. It just just by like recent memory, but I mean, I don't know. It's like they 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 had they did look better, but also like are you gonna count on that consistency to like be there for for the major? So they're just they're just right on that edge. You can it's also Crimbo's for his major, and you know we don't know how much that's gonna affect them. You know, nothing. Um, yeah, it's obviously been impressive so far, but cool. not at that's kind of a level. Like, are we kind of assuming Fabian's playing test. as well? Because we'll wasn't give him, Keto playing. For that's, them what we're, the that's what we're we're assuming. Like it's been it's gonna be two weeks before he has to travel. Um, so I I assume whatever he's he's fallen ill with he's going to be okay by that time by that time so i think we're they're going to be okay okay we're going to have to give him that fucking uh the gambit levels of uh forgiveness in their their major performances nobody yeah. I, smile there we go thank you chad yeah no look you got sun academy i it was it was there jason and i was just i'm just sitting here thinking about how many teams that we don't know enough about to know who we're even going to pull put, into the top them, of the entire them, event I mean, put them yeah. Five Put them at there. legends, so then we all yeah. we'll, we can we'll we can kind of end. like reassess at the end. Like Rob, obviously, have to put eight teams at the top. I know Moses Man. is big on this team. I Man. think you, I think you predicted my... them to get top four or something like that. Yeah, that? definitely. Those are that's take take. Uh, <laughs> make sure you take Cloud9 out of there. G two Yanko, you can get the fuck out as well. Slide mm-hmm. complexity right up into that top four. I actually have complexity in my getting destroyed. Uh, Whoa, bar. There we go. There we go. It doesn't feel who good do you, putting them there. Who do, you, who do you hate? Is it is it Jason? <laughs> Your no. uh, namesake? Is it Messi also? One of the players? What if Floppy do to you? I it, actually it's all about Grim, right? Dude, I actually hate this prediction more than anything because I actually really like like that. I like the core of this team and I like I like the uh a lot of the players on this team. Um, but I've said this uh, you know in a couple interviews now at this point. I think complexity's peaked, man. I think I think Whoa. we've seen like I have a sneaking suspicion that we've seen the top level we're gonna get out of them. Um, and I think especially against European competition, I think they're going to get annihilated. And if you are, if you are worried about like, if you're someone who's going to go look at like the recent performances, um, of teams and like kind of make that judgment, don't go back and rewatch the complexity games at blast. Like if, if, if the recent, if the, I don't know if any of you saw it live, but if you, if you need to see like recent events to see uh, recent matches to kind of predict what a team's going to do, do not go watch that MIBR complexity series because oh, you'd, put them, okay, okay. You'd, you'd be putting them in, you'd be putting them in getting destroyed as well. Maybe they're just better on land, Jason. That, Layers. Yeah, that's a good point. Wasn't on land. yeah it was maybe. Online. Yeah, for, that would be a wild turn of events for the NA region, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? The the, the North Americans Complexity. become landers. Complexity, I mean, the second youngest team at the major, Jason Moses O'Toole, they peaked. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you, do you think I'm wrong? Well, as a team, how can that be the youngest of spirit? I think they I think they have two I think they have two big issues this complexity roster and I guess this is me going to be me putting players on blast and I feel Here bad about it. that so I'm just going to apologize but I think they after this major I think complexity needs to upgrade uh junior at op and I think they need to upgrade JT at in game leader. Ooh. Um and I think those are two super important positions to have on a team 
And like I said, I like those guys, and I and I hate actually having to say it publicly, but that that's got to be the goal of complexity during this major is where you're going to go because other, otherwise, like we have to get through this in NA. If we're not like honest with like what the weakness is going to be, we're never going to get them better. But um, I don't think we're going to see. I don't. I don't. I don't think they. I don't think. I don't think it's possible at this point for this team to to kind of really have any kind of competitive run at the major. I think the yeah. I I'm not super super high on them either. I, like there's too many stupid noob mistakes happening and maybe you can say that that's time and experience that they need which is fine i'm fine with them being destroyed here because as i said super young team but the junior part is just not convincing like why is you can upgrade for a opera european opera maybe import some guy and uh you're like gonna poison be or Cirque. not poison but Cirque was fucking amazing for three years so i think that's great track record to to have if you can import someone he's good for three years that's I'd, good shelf life that's that's more than you can expect that's like better than the best essentially that's like six out of five uh the the igl part i don't know about that because i feel like that would be a big change for the team uh and i don't know if that's worth it for where complexity are right now but yeah yeah, I, I, I'm not going to try and talk you guys out of the getting destroyed category, but I just have them as meh. Yeah, like meh. That was where I was thinking. Well, like I'm happy to leave them where we've got them. It, it, it. At the end of the day, it's you know there really. We're saying they're not going to do a whole lot. Like you could simulate certain matchups on the fucking the simulator thing that guys made mage dot ieb dot im i think it is and you could you can simulate some there where there's some favorable matches for complexity yeah. like in zero in one one games and that kind of stuff right so like uh, they're not beating anybody that we've put above the meh no category basically like there's i don't see a world like okay maybe maybe they they, they pull a win out of their ass against one of these teams but it's just like if you look at the the level of the other teams that are above them like i wouldn't put them above so well what a what about Bad News Eagles? Let's jump in here. The uh, everyone's favorite underdog story. That could be like the the biggest squad story, honestly. Like that's also the the, the style like of the team. That kind of yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. Like they could pull like a weird, really big upset out of their ass, and then just like make the the next stage. And based on that, I don't see them going to playoffs. Obviously, like I don't. Th that's not a realistic expectations. But I feel like Legends wouldn't be out of the realms of possibilities for this team. No, I I I think like. As this is why the category is so broad, but like it's yeah. just gonna be like it, it's not meh for a team to be representing where they're from and and, yeah. and not have an organization yeah. or that kind but of stuff. But in terms but, of the tournament and, and their impact they're... they're gonna have on the event is probably meh. Yeah, yeah. I think I I was I said this yes not yesterday but last time that we talked about this team, which is that like their style is gonna be predictable once you get used to it a little bit. Like they do really weird shits that once you know that this is coming, like you're gonna be able to prepare for it. And that's that's something that I feel like they're going to come up against in this major, and that's like it just depends how much people are going to be able to prepare for that. Um, I think it's they've they've shown enough at the RMR for people to understand what the team is about now, and so that that's that that I see as a struggle. So it, that that it's somewhere on the brink of of like man and, and legends for sure. Uh, yeah, just whack them up in man. Let's let's drop them there. Let's let's just keep it rolling. Yeah. Astralis. Now this is an interesting one. Because I, I think Australia's have been making good progress as a team. Um, I, I don't think it's been anything that crazy. And obviously, it's to the Australia's name. So yeah. you, you're expecting the trophies to be lifted here. But in terms of what I not thought any, was going to be. No, but, you know, obviously, people still get hung up on, on the name value and everything like that. But uh, you, you look at it, and I think this team has definitely made good strides. So for me, I would, I think like Legend Stage is is more than doable and and mm -hmm. even the potential depending on matchups to sneak a spot into uh the the playoffs depending on matchups right so i think this category legends as a minimum is going to be our biggest category and then to to decide between them it's literally going to be a coin toss or matchup specific so i i don't know like i'm i'm glad that Astralis are trending upwards and they're making mm -hmm. it work but in terms of anything after that i don't know it's like this is so wide open yeah i i would actually kind of just based on the recent performances, I do think that they've looked a lot improved. Config seems to be getting out of his rod, which is, I think, a massive fucking win condition for this team. Like, he is probably the biggest win condition for this team, even. Like, obviously, you if, blame you put, is? if you put aside blame, like, doing the kind of shit that he did, who was it against? Like, 35 uh, and 1 or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there you go. There you go against Tense. Like, if, if he doesn't pull this out of his ass, like, sure, like, like 
that that's fine. Like you can put him as your like biggest X factor in that team. But Config is the guy who's going to open up the most. Like if if he turns up, I think they, that that could be a playoffs team. Mm. I think I think the important thing for Astralis is, you know, I think the the nice thing for them is that they seemingly have established a little bit more of a map pool. At least, at least that's what it felt like coming out of Blast was. Um, like we always kind of knew Ancient was going to be there mostly off the back of, of like they've put a lot of emphasis on it but also it's the map that Config has like looked the most comfortable on in, in the past few months but I mean their Mirage looked excellent uh, their Nuke was was strong as well so I think they're starting to get a little bit deeper into the map pool where they can play enough things to not be dangerous as well in series so I think I think they looked you know I don't want to get overhyped about how they looked at Blast because I, I thought actually even in some of the losses they've had, they looked very, very strong. They looked very good, I thought. Um, I just don't know if it's going to hold up when, when we head into the major. I have them as a playoff team. Um, and most of that is due to, to what I just saw last week at Blast. Um, but I mean, that's that's another team. I think I think the interesting thing about this this kind of major so far, and like just listening to us talk about all these teams, is there's just like such a wide like range of where teams could be if something like clicks at the moment. Like there's a lot of teams it feels like where we don't we haven't really been able to pin down what level they're playing at with any kind mm -hmm. of consistency. Yeah, uh, which is which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we thought we thought at the beginning of the year, but that by the major we get kind of like a better idea of where all these new teams would be. But we actually haven't really, apart from Phase, which we kind of knew they were going to blow up. Phase like, and Ents, everybody knew that. Phase but, and like, Ents feel like the only two teams that you have a good read of where they're at yeah. right now at this moment. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, and everybody and else is like super whatever. Try try to find a person that's going to put money on Ents being like top four, and I'm not sure how many w would do that. I can't no, see your hand. It's out of outside of the frame, but but it's it's still it's hard to do though, right? Like it it it's. I was looking at some like betting odds for like the winner of the tournaments and stuff like that, and like Ants is like seventh, I feel like, or eighth yeah. or something. They're not even. They're not among the top three or four. Uh, obviously, there are reasons for, for that, but it, it was just curious to see. And Phase, of course, is number one with Navi uh, being the second favorite. Nine um, Z. I feel like meh. I feel like they win a couple of a couple of matches, just like MIBR as well. I feel like they're getting destroyed. I think they're gonna get destroyed. Yeah. I, I think I don't know. I think if we have renegades there, I think we have to have nine Z there we, as well. We can't have I think it, it all depends on the draw, right? I yeah. think nine Z can probably compete with like the renegades, the IHCs, obviously like complexities, eternal yeah. fires, the BNEs and but also they like start that. against ants and they're gonna get banged out there. And renegades start against fours, which isn't impossible to win yeah yeah but we can we can put like is like because these categories they're loose right like i don't it doesn't matter if we have more teams okay. in certain okay. categories like yeah. i go i get what you're saying like there's only a certain amount of teams yeah, that can go not, zero three they're, they're right but leeway. i still think that like just just whack him in. we don't want to waste so much time on like yeah. these teams it's good it's, it's, okay. for the conversation it doesn't have to be an exact science we're let's, not chemists let's whack nine z it's getting destroyed let's put mibr in meh now let's get into some interesting yeah. teams here to talk about let's just yeah. fly through put put a tunnel fire into meh as well yeah, and then the and, last three teams yeah. are interesting. That's okay, it. so Copenhagen Flames, a, a proven land team. I don't care what any of you say. They're Landers. proven. Land. They do better at the, in the major circuit on land. We have. That's why I don't think you have a, an argument anywhere here. Yeah, good. I, I was hoping I wasn't going to get one. So this is the thing: how far can they push that? Right? Because last time round, it was like the first time out. Oh my god, look at this team! They're doing so amazing. They don't have like necessarily the most support because it's more of like a feeder team through Danish Counter Strike. Look at how sick Nikitas is. Roy, he's old and he's still owning everybody. Zyphon's fucking 17 and has 18,000 hours of Counter-Strike or something. Fucking Jason ridiculous. Lake pitch all over again for me, Chad. Yeah, well, but the, the point here is the hype last time was around this team. and But now it's like, okay, well, how far can they go this time around? Because in the RMR, they just fucking saddled up and dropped everybody, right? Like it was, it, it was pretty clean. They got it done. And then they went and played some online CS and it wasn't as good. Yeah. But coming into this, like they're straight in towards Legends. Can we truly expect this team to get to playoffs? That's the question. Do they have what it takes to play in that environment or get to that environment? I, I don't I, know. This I guess the question is, have you seen anything in like the past six, seven, eight months that would make you feel like they are better than they were in Stockholm? Mm. I'm the not. Same, the same they, around they came as close. Like... They lost in like overtime to NIP, right? Or something like that. Or like they yep. lost super, yeah, super, people. super close yep. to playoffs. Yep. They came as close as you can get to not making top eight. I, I have them legends at best, mm. uh, personally. I was going to get legends as well. Because remember, too, like it took like an incredible, like Roy was on one 
in Stockholm. Like Roy, if you remember, like had an absolutely incredible performance all throughout that entire legend stage to get them in the position to be able to. So I'm just like sitting here thinking of like wind conditions for Copenhagen Flames. Nika Dawes as well was was good. I think Yabby was having a bit of a come out. Like, uh, just do we think that like I, I I haven't been seeing that in the recent games of Copenhagen Flames that I lost, and I don't know if I've seen anything that makes me think that convincingly that they are better than they were at the Stockholm Major. I guess this is the thing though, right? Within the confines of, of, of this, of, this is why we're having such a hard time, right? A lot of these teams, right, have different tipping points. Some of them are newer rosters. Some of them are now established rosters, but in the shelf life of their team and the experience of the players are now reaching a point of maturity. There's like so many different bits and bobs or some of these teams are experienced teams that have been thrown together and then you hope that the recipe that, that what comes out on the other side is success. I feel like this is, it's going to be, mad because of all of those factors right like th this as sure there's all the betting odds and all that kind of stuff and you can say yeah this team should be good based on this that and the other but this is super open like i i, I can't keep saying this enough like it is yep. super super open in for me right like when i did my little categories i had eternal fire fours bad news eagles spirit imperial complexity mibr 9z ihc and renegades as the teams making up the numbers so they're just there they maybe win a best of one maybe well, they have to win a best of three because one some of them are going to be in in zero two matches right uh, but then i had teams that, like i labeled it a puncher's chance and these were all teams that for different reasons if everything comes together for them they could make a deep run into playoffs and that was vitality ants liquid big copenhagen flames and astralis uh, and yep. an ip right that was my like if if everything comes together and these teams hit their form and everyone's playing well and the calls are good and they get good opponents and they get like the right maps, they can go for deep runs into the playoffs. Like all of those names, like all of those names truly could because there's there's caliber on those teams that that is a possibility. Yep. And then the last set of teams I had was X Factor, which was, well, not the last, but this X Factor one was Outsiders, G2, and Furia. And Furia, because their play, their way they approach Counter-Strike is so different and off meta to everybody that if it works and they're able to they can they can go super deep as well they could be a top four conversation team outsiders with the with the dead team smell we already discussed that one g2 they haven't been showing the best form but they have the potential to be one of the absolute best best teams in counter-strike if not the best team in counter-strike right? right so it's like no one knows I know we've gone through this list, but no one, no one knows. Like how, yeah. how? That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why people come here so they can listen to us and feel like they know stuff. That's <laughs> the, that's a point. That's what we are actually <laughs> we supposed to do. Right? There's you not even any tangibles, look, I, man. I, I, Let's I just think, say stuff confidently. Yeah, I mean, I do think they are like you put them in the right spot, as in like, yes, if everything goes well, it could be a playoffs team. They could be, they could do some damage, like realistically, but. With we don't considering how many other teams we we kind of put in that top eight, I wouldn't put them above probably uh, anybody else. That I feel like I can find like, four or five teams that have more reasons to make playoffs than Copenhagen yeah. Flames, yeah. based on what what we saw from them so far. Yeah. Copenhagen Flames, okay, they beat Sprout Sinners and NIP uh, to go through. Then they lost to Ants in the Blast Showdown. Then they lost to Entropic and Miles to not qualify for Dallas, but they lost to whatever they have some other wins but mostly against like teams like top 30 teams uh which is great for them um but not like top eight at the major level so, I, don't see, I don't see why they'd they'd make top eight at the major and that's it how does this sound then what because i think ants and furia would be teams that we would consider to be made the top eight with their yeah. form both well, recently certainly playoff teams yeah so then like maybe we, we, that's what i'm saying like, we have eight teams there already and i wouldn't put like anybody below them above essentially the thing is, I, I can't have astralis a tier above vitality nip big let's talk about that let's put let's okay. walk ants and furia into playoffs and then just before we go further because ants has been pretty good we know that furia also who is it does anyone want to push them into the let's actually let's talk about astralis first astralis versus vitality yeah, I'm, down, I'm down to consider versus nip astralis versus liquid or, or big holy shit I just zoned out. I, I see. I see some new teams up on the on the list. Welcome back, <laughs> come on, Jason. Come on, Thanks, Moses, about that. We're talking about Ooh. Astralis versus another team to make the make the playoffs. Let's make arguments and convince each other. Astralis against another team to make. Look, the playoffs. What, you pick peak your, wise, pick, look, peak yeah. wise, I would say out of the Legends teams, peak wise, I would put Vitality on top. Pretty good, pretty convincingly, even. Oh, yeah, but they're not at their peak. I'd put NIP there based on just their consistent forms. Okay. Wait, we don't have ants in the top four. 
No, but no, no but no, because the top four. We would can be adjust phased. that. We can adjust that. We can adjust. That. Oh, I got you. We're we're no, trying we to do that, the whole math. Yeah, we put that at, that. at okay. first. We put that at first, like heroic club, because we were talking about them first. But we can we can consider that as well. But uh, it's yeah. I mean, I'm down. I'm down not to include Astralis in the top four because that's like the least convinced. But why? About why it, NIP? Like, like, how is NIP gonna make? Why does NIP make, make more sense? What did they show with Broland? That's super convincing. Except losing to Astralis, if I'm not mistaken, like five did days they? ago, and Blast. Did they? Who did they lose? Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Astralis, they lost ads. They they beat yeah, was, they beat yeah, it. Oh, it was the fucking Mirage, wasn't it? It was like yeah, the sixteen so, one on Mirage. Oh, Jesus. So maybe, maybe what, that's not a good idea then. I don't see how NIP are our team. They don't even have an offer. I mean, they have S tag, but whatever. So what's the point of that? Like for me, I'd, yeah. I'd see like Liquid and Big are better than NIP. Not Liquid. Maybe they are. I feel like Liquid have three very good players that could propel them deep into whatever. But this is this right here. I don't know if there's when we're not all going to agree on this one yeah. right here. No, that's the no, thing. It's like I would I I wouldn't put Astralis and NIP confidently on the same level as I have G two and some Furia. No, so no, I agree. But they that. could be on that level. I just wouldn't confidently put them there. Yeah. Like if it, like so, this is where I don't think we're going to have. So the, are we going to remove Astralis and NIP and put Vitality there, and everyone's going to agree that Vitality has like I don't think really we put chance. anybody there. We just do seven I, teams on top eight. Yeah, Sorry. like. Cheer. I know. And, yeah, that's well, fine. That actually makes sense because it's more, it, like the tiers make more sense essentially. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Like, if we don't have to do it. But like... this is this is the fun of the whole exercise. If you had to pick an A team, if you had to predict one. Yeah, but we have to predict we have when to... we do the pickums, right? That's right. what we have to predict. Like this here, I think yeah. we're just like sorting them into like what we think their reasonable okay. chance. Okay. Right. Vitality to legends. Vitality to legends. Then. Okay. What the fuck? Yeah. Bring them down. Bring them down, Lucas. So there you go. Teams on? All right. And then. The Ents heroic versus who would you Ants put Ents in the top nine. four over then, Jason? I have you want to hear my top four at the moment because I got you said I got Fury and Ants, right? Yeah, but I, I've I've swapped things around. I've been listening to these conversations and all that, those kinds of things. You know, it's we, not a, I, haven't, I haven't locked I haven't locked it in yet. Uh, yeah. My top four is Ants, Furia, G two, and then Phase Navi in the major winner category. Ants, Furia, G two in top four. Okay. Mm -hmm. five, and then five, I have I have heroic and cloud nine in my playoffs at the moment. Okay, oh, you know, there's still some room yeah. for some up, ups. Yeah, and well, I, and this is where to be. I can I can see again, right? I can see G two beating cloud nine. I can see G two beating beating heroic. I can see even Furia making it like a weird like upset run up against either of those. Like, sh I mean, it's not even an upset run. Furia have been well, really yeah. really good. They've been yeah. really good. I mean, they're, I, I really they're like honestly Furia. like top four aim for them. I think top four for them would be reasonable almost i think yeah. the problem the problem with this is like if we actually want to put some if we actually want to like put the uh, the issue into into the english language it would be that last playoff spot that like eighth team that would go there is probably between like just in terms of favorites between nip liquid vitality and astralis and at that point it's essentially like it's up to your own individual thoughts yep. on each team and who yeah. you're going to put there um, and I mean, you could probably make arguments for each of those teams to be that eighth team. You could probably make an argument for each of those teams against it as well. So it all comes down to your individual bias and which kind of team you think is like plays a style you enjoy or has a player you think is going to carry them to the spot. And it's just Zai like, Wu. you know, what, what the fuck ever. Yeah. Zaiwu, blame that for config or something. Yeah. OC Elige. I don't know who the fuck NIP has. They just keep winning for some reason. No one knows. Roland and Rez, rifle yeah, duo. Very Rez strong. Rez, I guess. Yeah. Let's, very uh, strong. I yeah. like Hampus as well, obviously. I think Hampus is a, is a great player on an IP. I think we leave it like this. I think we leave it like this. Can, we, even, remove like, Navi? can we remove Navi from Major Winner? It doesn't make sense. I think we can all agree the FaZe are the number one favorites. And now this makes a bit more sense. Okay. Yeah, fine. There would be favorites, yeah, going into it. I just have yeah. it, like, branded differently in my yeah, head, sure. right? So, like, for me, yeah, the, I mean, the last two... To... This Lucas, are you able to edit? Can you edit the little text boxes? Yes. Like, because the thing is, like, they're getting destroyed and meh. Like, they're all the same to me. Just like, feeling. who? it doesn't matter if you get destroyed or if you're meh. Like, they're the it, same it, thing. It does because this this way we annoy a lot of Brazilian people. And but I already did. I already did that by tweeting the, the thing I did before where I had 9Z in last place and the only Brazilian representative that they had, right, was the coach. And now he's not, not even able to be there. So it's like... 
like I, I went the safe one. Away that is, the Brazilian and that, is, that is why they're getting destroyed because Isik is unfairly punishing them. So it's not against a 9Z. This is actually your cry. This is my to, protest. This is your protest, yeah. So there we go. They're well, getting we, destroyed, not by other teams, but by the unfairness, by the, by the, by the, by the institutions that don't want to listen to them and uh, are just adding more pain to an there already painful existence that is living. And and now, well, we, we've nailed it. We've smashed it. That's the tier maker, Lucas. I am going to say yes. exactly like last time. Mark Copenhagen. my words. Here we go. Copenhagen Flames will not be the worst Danish team at the major. Here we go. That yeah, but okay. I mean, yeah, fair. To be fair, they are the the best. Oh wait, no, Hero yeah, Hero no. Well, they've got three. You either end up in the middle of the wickets, or you end up. At, yeah, okay, fair enough. That's fine. I don't think there'd be too many disagreements with that. They'll probably tie with someone. Anyway. Possible. All right, Lucas, you ready to get into the pickums for us, mate? We're using your account, I do believe. Ah, uh, just a sec. All right, we'll get are these we pickums done. Yeah. Are we being too boring? What I do like you mean? Fury. I like this Fury as like a top four as a kind of like our, like the the. This is this is the, a tie, maybe. Left, the yeah. out of left field pick because like so far we've gone really fucking safe, you know, with everybody, and with like the Cloud Nine and Heroic in top four, like okay, it, it makes perfect sense. But I feel like it can't. Not not all of these can turn out the way that we expect. Like we have to pick one kind of like out of left field, you know. Mm. So I feel Bro, like this Fury. I want to put. Four, I like it. I want to put Ents in my major winner category. Okay. I, I, I might, I might get real that's wild that's with this stuff. Too, that's a bit too much in my eyes. Is that too? Like, is that too wild for you? Yeah. If you guys want to do some it? homework and submit it, you know, we'll keep the, the the Twitter sphere open, and you guys can submit. This is yeah, okay, Jason. When you're done with yours, take a screenshot, send it. Yeah, to I'll us. do that. Yeah, we'll put you. it on the HLTV confirmed socials. It's you perfect. do your striker. I'll do mine. I'm gonna even change like some the of the. Thing, right? Yeah, do the whole thing. We'll okay. do homework for after, just after the show. Send it to to when, um to Dimitri or Lucas. I love or doing someone. homework at, when, at midnight. When you're all com completing this tier list, I want all of you to imagine the kind of mindset that you would be in if you were like sitting at a dark hole in the wall bar and you just had three shots of tequila. I want you all thinking <laughs> a little bit a little bit crazy, a little bit looser than you normally would be. Like take yeah. the nice reserved, polished personality you have, throw like just literally three shots of tequila, no lime, no salt, just straight down and get into that that mind frame. I'm actually okay. probably gonna actually take three shots of tequila before I do it. <laughs> okay, all right. Look, I, I yeah, like okay. I like the vibe. It is Friday. The major's coming. You were just announced on the No Majors Club broadcast, Jason. So uh, there's a there's a lot of excitement things happening yeah, right now. Yeah, I saw that. That's what I zoned out earlier. I was looking through that and I was you know I was like, man, they haven't even sent me the contract yet. So it really is just uh, kind of like standard esports. What are the rates like? Are they you know are they any good or? It's better than it was four years ago, Chad. I'll tell you okay. that. Yeah, that that that's that's a win we, in everybody's books. We uh, got a talent right. announcement now. Let's uh let's uh jump on in with uh these pickums, please, Lucas. Are you ready and ready to go? Yeah, I think he said uh, he is trying. Oh, he's trying. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now, Lucas, mate. All right. No, I'm, Come on, okay. mate. I'll actually make myself a drink after the show and then I'll do the, the pick him. So, so we we'll actually get into the right Yes. Aspect. We can I'm even say in team speak if you want to have like a happy hour. I'll go run down to the bar. I'll grab a couple of things. Where are your margaritas, Moses? Okay. You promised us yeah, margaritas. I did. What? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I did. I, I failed on that one. There you go. Nothing new. You ready? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. We're getting uh, there. It's one yep. step at a time. We got to go into oh, the coin. Yeah, and it... by all right, all right. Here we go. Uh, okay, let's start with let's let's start with the zero three team. Uh, let's do some votes around the room here, Jason. Which team you got going zero three out of the challenge stage? Uh, I think I threw IHC in there for mine. Okay, striker. I that was gonna go with nine Z. I haven't done it yet. Okay, no, that's okay. I just want what you think right now. Yeah, We're gonna go through and we'll vote. Prof? Um I I'd see. I see or nine Z. I think I'll go for IT in the end. Okay. Well I, I already did nine Z, so I would be inclined Please to do nine Z as well. So Lucas, you're gonna uh have the final say here between IHC and nine Z. You get to put which one of the two teams you think, because it's your pickums after all, now that we're tied on this. Which one of those two teams is going to go zero three? Wait, I actually have to keep these for the whole pick em for no, the whole tournament. Don't have to. Don't have but to it would have been more in, fun if we. Put it now. I mean, we pretended that was the case. I, I want the diamond, so I have okay. to change Just... it. All right, we'll put put <laughs> out of, your, out of right now out of nine z. What's your, what's your okay. Point? Okay. 
All what right, what, what would your pig be? What, 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 what would your pig be if if it was your pig him then? I mean, I I want diamond pig him, so I go yep. extremely safe all the time. So who okay. is that? But who so would you I put then? I would I don't care about zero three or three zero. I only play getting the you know bottom row. But you have Correct. to put but a team there, right? Somebody, like, I mean, why wouldn't you put somebody in the three zero zero three out of the ones that? Do you just lost? like close your eyes and pick exactly. like, a team? To, okay. I put okay. someone I don't like. All right, fine. Know? Well, just keep it as nine Z. <laughs> All right, let's let's fill out the the um, let's fill out the the main spaces here, and we can return to the three zero. So I think yeah. we would all agree, based off what we were just talking about, that we would have Ants, yep. G two, yep, uh, Astralis, Astralis, yep, Vitality, Vitality. Yep. and Liquid. Yep. And the outsiders. Yes. So yeah, whack ants G two in any particular order, it doesn't really matter. Astralis, Vitality, Vitality Outsiders, Liquid, and Liquid. Yeah. So we're missing one. So what two teams, I guess? Well, we're not, total? but this out of these teams here, right? Yep. Is there any of those teams that you guys would consider putting in the three O column? Because like for me, for example, I put outsiders in my three O category right now. I did as well, to be honest with you. You put outsiders in your three O. Yes, because yeah. I think yeah. that there's a chance that they don't go through, but I also okay, think that, gotcha. it's, you know, that's so that kind of an angle. yeah, so they either go through and they just fucking steamroll everybody, or they don't go through at all. I didn't want to waste a spot on them, but then yeah, to be fair, I did pick matches. Renegades and Complexity in the final two spots, so I am wasting two spots anyway. Ants um, are the number one seed, right? Did you say Ants? Ants are the number one seed, or maybe I'm crazy. Uh, wouldn't Renegades be the lowest seed? Uh, I guess. So then whoever's playing Renegade? No, oh, yeah, can't be. they're playing fours. That can't be right. I have Imperial. Is what Ants, your are, Ants are the highest. No, just, just going through. G2. You have Imperial going through? I have Imperial going through. Make an argument really? for Imperial going through, Jason. The oldest team of the event. Uh, I really don't have a good one for you. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I, I, um, wish I, had a, I wish I had a better one for you, but I look at the rest of the teams in the field. I don't see a whole lot impressive there. I think I think I think we'll see. Like I still think, um, you know, I think Fallen got memed on a lot for his time and, and like Liquid, and, and there were certainly I think he didn't like individually stack up to where I thought he might. Um, but I think there's still some skill there, and I think there's still some talent there, um, and among those players. And I actually, I mean, I just think I don't think it's any big feat to make it to Legend stage with some of the teams that are um, that are in this. To be honest, I mean, I agree completely with what you said, except for the part that Imperial would advance into the next stage. That part I don't agree with at all okay. because. Watching them actually play at the RMR, they looked very uninspired. And although I did say that on the desk, and then we had an interview with Fallen right after, and he obviously heard what I said, and he said, yeah, but uh, you know, we didn't really need to do anything complicated because of the teams that we played against, which I felt like is a great That's political an answer, yeah. great political answer, uh, scored points right there on the broadcast, but I don't think it's actually true, so... Uh, I guess I guess most of it, like if if you look at some of the teams that might have to go up against, like Nine Z, Eternal Fire, Force, honestly, like, for, like look some, at this, there's some there's some hard hitters, like in individual players on on some of those teams, which I guess is where you'd. The fact is that Fours needs to be the three O, um, because they play against okay. Renegades first first game, and then the second game they're gonna play like Imperial, uh, Bad News Eagles, like some of these teams that are also pretty winnable and then if they go to okay. well, they might as well like go that. 3-0 he's brought, he's he's brought some work to the table he's he showed his work i think i think the biggest issues is like the same conversation we're having about all the teams in the middle of the pack who we know have potential right we just need to see if they they shine with it for these lower teams it's none of them look complete like they had a couple yep. of gimmicks or maybe their map pool's not very deep they were good on their own choices but bad on their opponents or they have two really good players and three just okay players. None of the teams, like the Complexity, Bad News Eagles, Eternal Fire, IHC, MIBR, 9Z, Imperial, uh, who am I missing? I think I'm missing one name off that list. Um, Spirit, uh, yeah. on that list, those none of those teams look complete. It doesn't mean that they can't win some best of ones or maybe even you know get the upset like Prof saying with fours, getting some some good matchups on their way to, to a 3-0. That's definitely possible, is but none of them look complete. So it's like super hard to pick one out of the bunch because it's going to be which one of the names is on a heater. And remember, one of these teams to do this will have to play two best of ones in that same opening day. So whichever team is on that heater could continue that form. And these teams at this barrel of the Counter-Strike are more 
familiar with playing multiple series or multiple matches in a day than some of the more established names who play one best of three in a day. I don't know. We're talking best of ones here, but like where they get to prep heavy for their match overnight, this is going to be, you play your best of ones. You either in the one O column or in the zero one column. And then you have an hour break. I think it is between the end of the last best of one game and the start of the next to prep. Right. So this is, is different. Is it, it's a, it's a different battlefield, you know, where we're, maybe we're not in an octagon, maybe we're on a fucking field or in a ring or so, you know, we're, in a little bit of a different, a different hexagon. scenario here. Yeah, may, maybe a hexagon. You never know. You never know what we're we're doing. We're doing badly in here. I mean, if we're doing, if uh, like I'm guessing, we just need to put one team there anyway. So I'll go with Bad News Eagles. I have to say, you guys are Based overdoing your... it for what? for the for the diamond coin perspective here. Here we go. You're overdoing it. It doesn't matter who goes three zero because are you going to risk getting a sure? You know, guy who we're not who advances. Though. We're putting a fours in three this year, or someone, someone like that. Exactly. I don't care. I don't care about the diamond points. Oh my! I also goodness. just want to be completely right. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. This is just a big measuring contest. But yes. I think yeah. I think with this year, right? Like what Lucas is saying is, if we think fours are going to go through, yeah, right, then shouldn't shouldn't. No, we I don't think we, don't, I we don't, don't actually think that they're going to go okay. through unless they're going to be on a roll. You know, that's that was Prof's entire argument. But then that leaves us with the rest of the teams who are up there. Which one yeah. of those names could go through on Merit alone? Which has a deep enough map pool? Which do you think could... Ba because like you look at this, and then Imperial being that last team there, it doesn't become necessarily a bad conversation. Imperial just in the Dallas finals the other day, the qualifier beat MIBR, right? Yeah, I mean, so, but would you put Imperial over like a Bad News Eagles who just played better competition and just got through and actually showed that they can bear with the best when imperial we've only seen against really shit teams but okay but then i then it. i measured up and i say it's a 2-2 matchup and i say it's to progress and that's I when mean, bad news the, eagles i would put them over but but that's but that's when the when i go into i reach into my back cabinet and i go this is when the actual experience of bolts fallen fur and fnx actually counts for something and vinny too it counts for something now it counts it's a pressure game bad news eagles this is the best the biggest match that i've literally ever played maybe even for most of them in all of their career across any other teams they've ever played in like that's like I'm somehow now talking myself in to saying that I think Imperial could progress. <laughs> I don't know how that's. Fuck how yeah, that Welcome to the club, Chad. Let's happen. fucking go. Like uh, I'm definitely never... on the Bad News Eagles train. If this is the if this is the war that we're having, I'm backing my mate back. Striker right yeah. here. I'm like, afraid. Out of, out of all I'm the teams that we haven't of... picked so far, I think Bad News Eagles are actually the most, like the, I, I don't know how to call it. Kind of like the most volatile team that could just like fuck up anybody that they meet there, you know. I think yeah, Bad mold. News Eagles is such an emotional pitfall. I think we're all going to get emotionally dedicated to that to the story behind this team. I think they will too, actually. Ooh, it's going to ruin you. That's a dangerous one. I'm but staying that, away from but that. That's also, I don't want the emotions but, part of this. But like that, that energy is also why I want to back them because I know like this is the team that it, that the major is going to matter to the most, like by far. I feel like, like yeah, but this isn't a wise, fucking Disney it movie. It could be bad. It could be bad <laughs> for them as well. I, I'm not saying that it couldn't. Like they could just get destroyed zero three. But I think that's like the energy is kind of like what I'm backing here. Okay, okay let's that's let's put fours let's put fours in the three O category, right? Let's work them like if some some crazy miracle happens and and Shalfi just keeps owning everybody and Jerry makes a couple good calls. So right now we have one camp of Imperial versus the other camp of Bad News Eagles. But can we bring any of these other names into the mix here? Could we bring? Is there complexity, an argument no, to be made with complexity? Be, uh, no, no. I guess I Jason said before that these things are yeah, repeated. If complexity, so. if he isn't I'm, lacking complexity, I'm, yeah, no. The door's a very good guy here. I'm, I'm willing to listen to anyone make a good argument for complexity. I'm, my ears are open. I'm an open-minded human. I can take it. I just, I, I'm not there. I don't feel. I'm not feeling it. I don't know. For whatever reason, I don't think it's as bleak as the picture that's been painted. No, I like, think they could. I don't make. know how we yeah. ended up. I don't know how we ended up considering con complexity lower than Imperial, who haven't actually played any single good team. <laughs> And, that's and true. Like play, like that's that's, true. The, that's the craziest part to me. Like we haven't seen Imperial play anybody remotely. The thing is, we good. saw complexity play enough that we know that they're not going to make it. If that makes yeah, sense. But we're that's why them against that's the why I can right? see I can see a peak of uh, of Bad News Eagles and them going through. I could even see like Imperial just doing some random shit. But I, I saw complexity play so much that I just I just know how it's going to end up. I'm telling you that blast series ruined me. It was like a so it's taken all the illusion away, all the shine. This is okay. gone. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's like we need a bit of mystery, a bit of unknown, right? That's well, that was that what we have with Imperial and Bad News Eagles. Let's That's do this. That's why we just need to pull in Lucas again. We have Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. 
Lucas, you you're doing the vote here, mate. You get to pick between fucking uh Bad News Eagles or Imperial for that last spot. And then I can submit or are we happy? Yeah, that, that would be it would be done. Hmm. Take your time. Yeah, really mull this one over. I think we're we're good now. Okay, so you're going to keep Imperial. You made the safe for the two that, choices. He did, that, he did that just because of social media. Yeah, which is fair enough. You know, so you, you, you got to respect it. You got to think about the man and his choices that are being made there. Okay, so we would have fours going zero, uh, fours going three zero, IHC going zero three, G2, Ancestralis, Vitality, Outsiders, Liquid, Imperial as the teams who are making it through. This last spot could definitely go to anyone. Like it uh, could be Eternal Fire, it could be Complexity, it could be listen, 9Z. We, we already we already got our points. The Imperial doesn't even matter. That last one doesn't even matter. We already got our five correct pickums elsewhere on the exactly, board. Exactly, Moses. That's the go. diamond yeah. coin mindset right That's there. That's what we're thinking about here. Some some guy today, like I I made that thread. Well, I didn't make it. I made the tweet of the thread that I couldn't make. And some guy was like asking me why I'm picking renegades. And I was like, sometimes you know you just gotta believe. And he's like, but you won't get a diamond coin. I didn't even know how to reply because I didn't want to just say I don't actually care about getting a diamond digital coin. Um yeah. But, but it's like it's just it's it's a bit of fun this is like making you more invested in watching the tournament because you want to see how you do right i i, I don't like i don't, don't really care if i get a diamond coin or not like well it's, it's all it's all good it's yeah, just a bit it, of fun i yeah. feel like i just like ruined christmas with for you. a lot of people though you know i feel like the grinch right now i'm sorry everyone <laughs> uh, so whatever sorry guys i think it's a boomer versus zoomer mentality chad because i don't care about the, i don't i don't care about the diamond coin either but these kids they fucking hate nfts and they're trying to collect the diamond nft in counter-strike right now don't like, go there what, what? don't go it's not worth it it's not worth it no yeah anyway okay <laughs> um i think we i think we did it all we we definitely went over so thank you jason i know we did something last night we also we also went for a while so it's two nights back to back we've done some some waffling on here are we are we good. content with this guys yeah yeah Okay. All I right. Like well, let's let's do. Let do we have any viewer questions? Let's just quickly go check the Twitter sphere, check the thread, <laughs> see if there's anything from the viewers coming in that we can quickly ask, and then we'll shut it down. I'll run over the details for the live show we're going to do again and, and and whatnot. But um, is there anything here in the thread? We had some we had some questions, I think. Yeah, go uh, still uh, questions, outrageous. concerns, comments. Most outrageous prediction for the major. Is that one of the questions? I don't know. It's uh, just something that Dust2 did, I think. We could. That's not a bad. We could just do, yeah, like one bold prediction for the major. Yeah. Oh, you can get on. You can drink that that Fury of that hype you would. Is that is that the team you picked? That's Jason, not that or? bold. I feel like. No. Okay. I did actually put Fury in my top four. That is, it's that one's a big risk. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do. And I have a, in, gained a certain level of appreciation for Fury, but top four is very ambitious for that squad. Hmm. Yanko just said, "Here's one." Oh. Right. I thought it was going to be a serious question. I started reading it from Yanko and then I got halfway oh, yeah, through and I stopped. Kind of yeah. So we, we thank you for the question, Yanko. Um, know, Dickhead, why do you hate FaZe so much? Oh dear. It's getting hot and heavy and got heated him. out the here. Nico's not there got anymore. Him. That's why. Did, did we have any did we have any questions? I don't think we did. I don't think big, we were uh, big to playoffs. That's mine. That's your bold right. prediction? Yeah. Okay. Striker. Yeah, I mean, I had my Fury, I think, but I was kind of like, bad. I, I was piggybacking off Moses, so I'm, I just have to pick something else. Um, whatever, Bad News Eagles to Legends. Okay. I told okay. you, emotional pitfall. He just he just comes in and sets the example. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll take the bait. <laughs> I don't care. What do you got, Jason? Uh, Ents in the finals. Okay. okay. That would be crazy. That would I actually really be talk crazy. about Ents, but... No, we didn't. But the thing is, one like, of the youngest, most ex inexperienced teams, and one of the most exciting teams. Don't worry, about. but but Gambit isn't gonna like Cloud9 aren't gonna perform on on a stage. But you know, Madden and Dika and Hades, <laughs> they're gonna be amazing. They're gonna be cold as ice, according to Moses. I know, I know where you're going with that. But look, Moses uh, just nodding away. <laughs> but the Ents guys, you know, they they've been in some finals. They they've been they've been in they've been. Uh, look, I like Ents. I like I like their approach to the game. Um, my bold Great. prediction would be that Renegades win a map. That's my bold prediction. Um, okay. I know a lot of people have them in the zero three category. Uh, they I, could go I, zero three and win a map. So true. Yeah, still they win a series. How about that? Okay, okay. they win a series. So they either win one of the best of ones or or, the, or a best of three. So match, not a series. Yeah, yeah. Fucking 
Yeah. <laughs> it's not a serious <laughs> chat. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how long Look, you've been in this business. But... They've been playing. They'll, they'll play and they'll win and they'll walk away with the W next to their name. That's all. That's all we need. Not no. in the stats either, because if you go through the stats and there's out, you know what I mean. All right. They'll progress. They'll be, they'll have a one next to their name in the column. There we go. That would have been the best. A one dash the w. something. What are they going to have? What are a you one have? dash well, something. They have some pride, Australian pride to bring home. I they're not going to win two. Well, they, win well, two they have dignity after the, after the event. Is that what you're trying to say? To be fair, like if we compare this back to like the other, this is, the, this is like the, this is the whole conversation we had last major with like the may is the, is this the major HLTV fucking via the stats database have this as the major qualifier. Let's not go into that again. Let's, I mean, let's historically, that's just something we have to keep. It <laughs> We're not doing this conversation again. Let's we can't go. do it again. We, we can, have some nice, nice thoughts to end up on. Yes. Nice thoughts. Does the someone have some nice, nice thoughts? Someone oh, I'm going to say something nice. Modest, say something nice. Modest, straight to you. You're the nicest guy in the whole talent crew. We all know that. I'm the nicest guy in the talent crew. Yeah, low key. Low key. <laughs> yeah, don't well, not anymore. You just fucking put me blew my, blew my spot. Um, yeah. Wait, what was the question? I just say I, something I, nice. Just say something nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I I hope uh, I hope everyone has a lot of fun out there in Antwerp. You know, I think you guys are gonna put on a great show. All the all the drama aside, I don't even know. I, I you know, I I gonna start rambling now apparently no, it's a um, it is a struggle i uh it did it felt weird seeing that there was so much drama i felt no drama around that talent announcement uh so i mean i don't know i'm just excited to see the the, the young guys I think you know it's been cool watching them rise up so i'm just excited to, to sit back and open a couple beers and watch some of the watch some of the games with with all the fans so i'm actually pretty pumped to just be getting a chance to tune in for once to a major that's all i got okay yeah all right. it's actually well. the same for me i like i covered the last what is it? Since 2016, Columbus 2016, this is the first time I'm not going to cover the entire major. Oh, well, you'll be there. For the playoffs. What? You'll be there. Yeah, you'll I'll be, be for the playoffs, We'll be yeah. doing the live show. We'll be doing all that fun stuff. All right. Uh, let's 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 talk about that live show. It's going to be going down on the Wednesday the 18th. The reason it has to be Wednesday the 18th is the matches will be following Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So live show from Antwerp from uh, Outpost. Not Outpost. No. What was it again? I it is Outpost. Name. It is Outpost? Yeah. Uh, and Outpost. I heard this first time today, by the way. I remember somehow. Yeah, well, that's the venue. Outpost will be you the know. venue right there. You can check them out, outpost.be. The uh, podcast will be kicking off at 8 p.m. We're going to have 60 tickets available. Those tickets are going to cost 10 euros or less, and it will come with a free drink. Uh, it has to be limited to 60 people because of uh, occupational health and safety, fire hazards, and all that jazz. And uh, we're going to have some giveaways going on there and some special guests are going to be dropping on by. Maybe we can get a player or two. Maybe there'll be a couple of members uh, of the broadcast team down there checking it out and having a couple of drinks. So uh, more information to come with that. Uh, shout out to the sponsors, uh, ExtraFi, N1, Bet, Gamble Responsibly, and of course, Bitskins. And uh, it's been good to have Lucas back pressing the ones and twos. Thank you, Jason, for joining us here this evening for an extended episode uh, talking about the major. And uh, yeah, that, that'll be it. Until next time, uh, we'll try and do an episode next week uh Friday. in the break but i don't know if i'm gonna have access to a place with ethernet so that'll be it everyone happy yeah yeah make sure you do your homework i'm finishing mine up right now all right do your homework everyone send us some tweets see you later goodbye copenhagen flames will win the major Add some fun to your space with ExtraFi, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4, their fourth generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with ExtraFi. No regrets. Guaranteed. Stuck ranking up? Lost the motivation to grind? Bored of clicking heads on AIM maps? Get some color into your game. 
BigSkins.com. Buying and selling skins made easy. Tons of payment methods and instant cash outs. Just choose your dream skins, select your preferred payment method and start grinding again. If you want to play like the pros, you've got to look like the pros. 